Hello and welcome guys. Make yourselves comfortable and enjoy. This is Affinity Colon Chaos. Chapter 231. The group left the inn with Klaus and Richard walking side by side, laughing on the way. Hey, do you know what's wrong with him? Reynolds leaned closer to Grey and asked. No, but from the way he's smiling, it's nothing good for them, replied Grey. Hum, I really wanna know, Reynolds said curiously. Grey rubbed his chin before replying. He'll tell us when we get there. The group soon got to the carriage alongside Smith and Richard. It was all white with the decorations painted gold drawn by four snow white stallions. The carriage looked quite luxurious, but there was an issue. It was a little too small to fit all of them. One person would need to walk over to the mayor's villa. Richard said when he realized the problem. Klaus looked around and a smile crept up his face. All he wanted to do was annoy these guys. How about this? Alice will walk over to the villa. He pointed at Alice. Gray and the others looked at him in shock, only to see him winking at them. He knew exactly what he was doing. No, it's ungentlemanly of us to allow such a kind-hearted lady to walk to the villa. When there's a carriage here. Richard quickly objected to it. Hum, okay, it's settled. You, you'll walk over to the mayor's villa. The rest come inches. Klaus pointed at Smith before going into the carriage, accompanied by Gray and Reynolds. Gray and Reynolds realized what he wanted to do the moment he said that Smith should walk to the villa. So they quickly followed him inside the carriage without any delays. Alice smiled softly but still climbed into the carriage, leaving Richard and Smith outside. Richard and Smith stood outside shell-shocked. Smith actually had his mouth wide open, because he could not believe what just happened. Klaus knew that the only reason Richard and Smith approached them was because of Alice. If he had pointed at Grey or Reynolds, Richard might agree to it. But if he pointed at Alice, he would not. He also sensed that Smith was acting submissive towards Richard even though it looked he had a high status in this city. What the hell? That's my carriage. He almost screamed out loud. Richard's mouth twitched a couple of times before he whispered, Don't worry, they will regret this. Smith couldn't believe his ears. First Klaus acted like he was the owner of the carriage, and now, Richard was actually telling him not to worry. Doesn't that imply that he would have to walk to his father's villa? A cold glint flashed through Richard's eyes before he climbed into the carriage, leaving Smith all alone outside. Smith stood outside, tears almost running down his eyes. And just when he thought things couldn't get worse, it started raining. What? He exclaimed in surprise. The sun was just about to set, and the weather was still fairly bright. There weren't even any signs of rain. So, how the F-U-C-K did it suddenly start raining? Unfortunately, the carriage had already departed. And even if it was still there, he couldn't get in. He almost wanted to cry, but his expression turned worse when the rain stopped after the carriage went out of sight. Smith was an earth elementalist. But the surprise from Klaus's actions, and Richard actually agreeing for him to walk to the villa, stunned him to the extent that he didn't form something like an umbrella to shield himself from the rain. In the carriage, Klaus and Richard were talking enthusiastically with Klaus telling him of their travels. Of course, he didn't speak of the trial land, or where they came from, nor where they're headed. In short, he lied all through the conversation. He even said they were kicked out of their academy, because they couldn't get to the target set by the academy. Some of his stories are so enthralling that even his friends listened intently. There were times that they were shocked by what Klaus said they did. Void looked at Klaus and couldn't help but praise him. This guy is amazing. He's a good liar. Gray replied. No, you saying he's a good liar is an understatement. He's a terrific liar. When were we robbed when coming? Void took at Klaus who was still speaking. Or attacked. Gray added. When did we even sleep in the forest? Okay. That might be true since we did sleep in a forest while we were in the trial land. If someone who wasn't with the group heard all of Klaus' bullshits, they would definitely believe it, just like how Richard was believing almost every word he was saying. Five minutes later, the carriage got to the mayor's villa. When the carriage stopped, Gray and the others looked out the window, only to discover they were just at the gates of the villa. Two fully armed guards talked to the coachman, before inspecting inside, above, and below the carriage, before letting them pass. Once inside the gate, and beyond the high grey walls, the carriage slowed down, allowing Gray and his friends to take in the full villa view. The park around the manor extended over 800 meters. 
The air smelled of cut grass, flower beds, and finely trimmed bushes adorned the cobblestone paths that went across the whole park. Halfway between the gate and the villa, there was a plaza surrounded by benches. At the center, there was a huge pedestal with a marble statue of someone that the group assumed had to be either the first mayor or an ancestor they were proud of. There's also the possibility that it was the current mayor as well. The villa itself was bigger than the group imagined. It extended for at least 3,000 square meters, divided into a main building, a left and a right wing, forming a reverse U shape. It took almost three more minutes to actually get to the villa's entrance. Gray sent out his spiritual sense to examine the area, and he easily noticed the guards that were hiding behind the bushes, watching them. It was only after they highlighted the carriage did the guards stop watching them. Void, he called, on it. Void replied. His senses were sharper and covered a greater distance compared to Gray's, so he would be able to sense what Gray missed. Nothing to worry about. They're all in the arcane plane. There's one guy hidden inside that seems to be close to the origin plane. Or maybe he's in the origin plane. I really can't tell, but the person isn't a problem, even Klaus can defeat him. Void reported. If Klaus were to hear Void's statement, he would definitely curse at him. We should wait for that guy, Klaus suggested. He acted like he had forgotten Smith's name, when the truth was, he had also forgotten Richard's name as well. But since they were now friends, he didn't need to call Richard by his name. Well, that was what he was telling himself. Klaus's behavior was currently strange for the group, but knowing that he wasn't up to anything good, they decided to watch with folded arms. They entered the carriage back to the plaza and sat on one of the benches around the plaza. Richard had tried on multiple occasions to strike a conversation with Alice, but it had all been futile. Hey, do you like my friend? Klaus asked Richard. The duo was sitting on one bench, while Grey, Reynolds, and Alice were sitting on another bench. Yeah, I fell in love with her when I saw her helping that elderly man. Richard nodded with a soft smile. After tonight, you'll all be dead, thought Richard. You saw her helping that old man that was pushed aside. Klaus asked while wearing a surprised expression. Richard nodded, but his expression changed when he heard Klaus's next question. Why didn't you step out to help the old man, instead of allowing her to do it? Klaus asked thoughtfully. This guy deserves death. I'll make sure he suffers. Richard gritted his teeth hatefully, but did it secretly, so Klaus wouldn't see it. You see, I was just about to walk out when she helped. He smiled awkwardly. Ha ha. I knew you were a noble person. Oh, why did you guys also allow the guards to extort money from us? Klaus laughed before asking. I'll irritate you till you drop dead. Thought Klaus. There's something only his friends knew about him. He was multi-talented. He could talk, annoy, and irritate someone all at the same time. You see, actually, Richard was left short of words. How could Klaus ask him such obvious questions? Of course, he didn't want to help, but he couldn't say that. Just as he was about to try explaining, Smith walked in. Ah, you're finally here. Klaus stood up and swaggered towards him. Smith tried to force out a smile, but his expression turned even sourer when he heard Klaus's next words. How was the weather? Chapter 232. How was the weather? Klaus asked with a big grin. Smith's eyes twitched when he recalled how he got soaked in the rain, which for some reason fell only on the area he was standing at. He knew this was the handwork of Gray and his friends, but he didn't know which one. Hearing Claw's question pointed him to the culprit. I'll kill this guy, he thought through gritted teeth. This was the most humiliated he had ever been. What was worse was that he didn't actually see a horse, so he had to walk all the way from the inn to his father's villa. I think it's lovely, don't you think so too? Gray actually joined in this time. He sensed the increase in the water elemental particles at the inn, when they were just about to enter the carriage, but he didn't know the reason. However, on hearing Klaus's question, it wasn't hard to figure out what happened. Klaus actually created a make-believe rain, how ingenious and evil. Yeah, amazing. Reynolds nodded as well. The trio continued speaking of how great the weather is, making Smith's expression turn even more sour. He felt like burying the trio alive. Why don't we go in? Richard quickly tried to help him out. He could sense there was something weird going on, but he didn't know, nor did he care. All he had his eyes on was Alice. That was what he wanted, nothing else mattered. The group of six slowly walked over to the villa, 
Heading in the direction of the right wing, it took the group over five minutes to walk there. One should remember that when the group previously came here, they used a carriage. And even though the horse was moving slowly, it was still faster than their current pace. Klaus was surprisingly at the forefront of the group chatting animatedly with Richard. Richard's expression showed how tired he was, yet for some reason, Klaus still didn't stop talking. When he noticed Richard wasn't speaking anymore, he turned his attention to Smith. Veins could be seen on Smith's forehead. He gritted his teeth so hard that his gums started bleeding, but he refrained from attacking. He was wary of Klaus's strength. He didn't know his exact strength, but he knew he was at least in the arcane plane. As soon as they entered the building, Smith took them straight to a hall on the left side of the building. An 8 meters long, 2 meters wide table could be seen by the side of the building, with 10 chairs arranged around it. Gray, Alice, and Reynolds were sitting on the other side of the table, with Gray facing Klaus, Reynolds facing Smith, and Alice facing Richard. Klaus was actually the one who told Gray and the others to sit this way. He initially wanted Gray to take the sit Reynolds was presently occupying. But then he recalled Reynolds was the only one in the group other than himself who could properly annoy someone. After taking their seats, comma, Smith called for the servants to bring in some food and wine for his visitors. Even though he didn't like Klaus and the boys, he still had to be a good host. Klaus was exhilarated when he heard this. Haha, I haven't had a good wine in a long time. When the servants came back with different foods and also around four types of wine, Klaus was the first to pick up a wine bottle and helped himself with some. He poured some on one of the silver cups on the table, before emptying it in a single large gulp. Richard and Smith took a glance at each other, a little surprised. They could see the same question in each other's eyes. Isn't he afraid it's poisoned? Also, we were his ethics. Good wine. Here, have some. He exclaimed before pouring some for Richard. Thank you. Richard smiled lightly before picking up the silver cup. Ha <laughs> ha. Cheers. Klaus laughed out happily. Both glasses made a clink sound when they lightly tapped them on each other. Klaus also went on to pour some for Smith and Reynolds as well. He winked at Reynolds while pouring it, quote, Here, you guys should try it as well. Smith had an awkward expression on his face. Normally, it was the duty of a host to pour his guests drink. Yet, Klaus was the one who was doing it. First, he acted like he was the owner of the carriage. Now this. I can't stand this guy anymore. Smith was on the verge of exploding. Richard on the other hand just watched on without showing much interest. Other than the first time he was shocked by Klaus being the first to drink, his attention was fully placed on Alice. Smith reluctantly picked up the silver cup. And just like what Klaus did with everyone else, he wanted to lightly touch his cup with Smith while saying cheers. But just then, cheers, he said, but his voice reduced at the end of the word. The reason for this was because he accidentally hit his cup too hard on Smith's cup, making both cups which were filled with wine to fall on Smith's body. And just when Smith was about to react to the wine falling on his body, the worst happened. Poo. Reynolds, who just took a mouthful of wine, spouted out, spraying the wine straight at Smith's face who was sitting opposite him. Everyone's mouth opened unconsciously when this happened. It hadn't even been up to two seconds after Klaus accidentally poured some wine on Smith's body. Yet Reynolds spat the wine in his mouth into his face. This was the highest level of embarrassment. Sorry, it was an accident. Sorry, I didn't like the flavor. Reynolds and Klaus apologized simultaneously. Bang, enough. Smith yelled angrily, banging his hand on the table forcefully. Chapter 233 this was the last straw, Smith was already on the verge of losing it. So having wine not only poured on his body, but also sprayed on his face, sent him hysterical. He wanted Klaus dead. Gray and Alice watched on in disbelief, while Void seems to have stars in his eyes. He loved these guys. They were terrific people. He even felt Gray was starting to get a little too boring. Calm down, it's probably an accident. Richard stood up trying to calm Smith down. They did it on purpose. Smith didn't want to let it go. There was a limit to a person's patience. And Klaus had obviously not only pushed Smith to the limit, but he had also pushed it off the cliff. Gasps. Klaus gasped in shock. How can you say that about us? We genuinely want to be your friends. Since we're not welcomed here, then we'll be leaving. Thank you for your hospitality. He wore a wrong expression. It almost looked like he was the one who was offended. Gray and the others stood up as well. 
There's no need for any of you to leave, Sid. We'll be right back. Richard quickly stopped them. He dragged Smith with him to the side of the hall. At the side of the hall. Why are you tolerating that piece of shit? Let me at him. Smith said angrily. Don't act like you aren't wary of their strength. I've grasped their stages. And they're only at the fifth stage of the arcane plane. Except for that one guy who talks a lot. That guy's in the sixth stage. Richard said. At first, he didn't think much about checking the group's plane. Since he felt people in such small cities couldn't grow to a high stage at their age. Take Smith for example. He was still in the arcane plane. While he had already broken through to the origin plane. Despite being two years younger than him. But when they were still in the carriage. He decided to check them out. Although he was surprised when he noticed they were already in the fifth stage of the arcane plane. He didn't think much about it. Since he should be around four or five years older than them. And he didn't think they would be able to break through to the origin plane when they get to his age. Well, that's if they get to his age. After all, he planned on killing them except for Alice. HMPH. You can beat them all. Why bother with all this? Smith snorted coldly. It's already dark, prepare that special wine. They shouldn't be able to move after consuming it. Richard said with an evil grin. Smith could only nod his head when he heard this. He still didn't know why Richard wanted to use such a long, stressful method when he could just bash Grey and his friends up. Unknown to him, Richard couldn't be counted as a true origin plane elementalist. He failed in the process of forming his essence bead. But his father used a method that helped him to form what looked like a patched up bead. With this, he would be in the origin plane in terms of cultivation level. But his true strength was actually lower than an 8th stage arcane plane elementalist. The only reason he wasn't scared was that no arcane plane elementalist who is in his right mind would dare to fight against an origin plane elementalist. Smith might even have a chance of defeating him. But because he couldn't dare to challenge him, he didn't know. Back at the table, after Richard dragged Smith away, Klaus and Reynolds started chuckling. They refrained from laughing out, so they wouldn't be caught. I have to say Klaus, you're putting on an amazing show. Grey chuckled as well. Of course, these morons are just plain stupid. Klaus laughed. Oh, how did you know he would want to check a planes? I guessed, given his somewhat proud personality, he would want to confirm if we were small fries. I think he would have run away if he knew we were stronger than him. Said Grey. Don't you find it strange he's wary of us, even though he thinks we are weaker than him? I mean, if I were in his shoes, I'd have already killed Klaus by now. Reynolds said thoughtfully. You're crazy. You should have said I'd already kill Reynolds by now. But it's quite strange though. Klaus cursed before adding. It's simple, he's weak. He isn't a true origin plane elementalist. Have any of you ever seen an origin plane elementalist whose aura is this weak? Alice asked. The boys shook their heads. They've also thought of why his aura was that weak. An arcane plane elementalist might not be able to sense it. But origin plane elementalists have no problems with sensing this. That explains it, Reynolds said with enlightenment. Klaus, I'm still confused why you ask them to pay for our meal. Gray had thought about this while they had been in the carriage, but he couldn't think of the reason. How many coins do you think we have left? Klaus asked. Ah, uh, Gray was left stunned. Smart. The others praised Klaus's quick wittiness. Hey Gray, can Void hear me? Klaus suddenly asked. Yeah, why? Gray nodded. I need to talk to him. Klaus stood up and walked over to Alice's sit. He bent down close to Void, and for some weird reasons, started speaking slowly. I need you to. Klaus. Grey interrupted him. Ah. Klaus raised his head to look at Grey. You don't need to speak like you're speaking to a toddler who can't understand you. Void understands when you're speaking normally. Grey almost fascinated when speaking. Oh, I thought I needed to speak slowly so he could understand. Klaus scratched his head awkwardly. Why the F-U-C-K would you think that? Asked Grey a little puzzled. I don't know. I've not communicated with a magical beast before. I thought maybe they would have their language. Klaus rubbed his chin as he explained. Grey shook his head, but didn't ask any further questions, since asking would only lead to more unreasonable explanations from Klaus. Okay, listen up, we're going to rob this place. Klaus said to Void. Void's eyes lit up when he heard the word rob. I really like this guy. He couldn't help but say to Grey. Yeah, me too. Grey nodded as well. Chapter 234. Since this is the mayor's villa, 
There should be a treasury somewhere. That's where we're going to rob, Klaus explained in a low voice. The others were stunned by Klaus's boldness, even though they know that no one here could defeat them. This was still an offense against the Empire, since each mayor was placed here under the orders of the Emperor. Isn't there usually a high-leveled expert around? Asked Alice. A small city just like this one should have an expert that should be at the very least at the Origin Plane to stop anyone from robbing these cities. Or else, most Origin Plane elementalists would see them as ways to get free coins. There are, why do you think I'm telling this guy? Klaus pointed at Void. No one knows of the space element except for us. With that, he can sneak in and out of the mayor's treasury without being caught. He explained further. So what are you planning on stealing? Gray asked. Everything. Klaus said with squinted and excited eyes. He had never been able to do something like this before, and probably never would have thought of it. But with Void's appearance, the idea came. There are a lot of things in a mayor's treasury. He knows of this because he had been to one. But what they needed most were coins. Lots and lots of coins. Aren't you being a little too greedy? I mean, all we need is to get a horse and quickly head over to Luna City. Once we get there, we shouldn't have any problems with getting money. Said Alice. I know, I just want to annoy these guys. Klaus waved his hand nonchalantly. No, I think Alice is right. If they notice everything missing, we'll be the first suspects. That's not good for us, since this not only involves a city but the Empire as well. Unless, we kill the expert stationed here. This city is too small for an Overlord plane expert to be stationed here. Gray said thoughtfully. They shouldn't carelessly invite trouble. The Empire wouldn't take it lying if one of their mayor's treasury were to be robbed. This had to do with their pride, so they would want to get to the bottom of it, especially now that war seems to be looming over the entire Empire. Fine, we'll steal only a few coins, Klaus said grumpily. While the group was still speaking about their plan of robbing the treasury, Richard and Smith walked back to the table. I hope everything is alright? Klaus stood up to ask in a concerned tone. Yes, everything is fine. He was just a little grumpy from what happened earlier today. Richard said before taking his seat. Okay. Once again, we're sorry for what happened. It was totally unintentionally on my path. I don't really know about his. Klaus said, saying the last part in a low voice. Don't worry, everything is fine now. I'm not a petty person. Smith waved it off. He wanted to end the conversation as quickly as possible. The table fell into silence for a few seconds. But Klaus spoke up even before it got to a minute. Okay, so can we start eating now? He asked. Of course. Smith nodded. He was just about to start eating, since it was the norm for the host to taste the meals, so the guests would know they weren't poisoned. But just like with the wines, Klaus was the first to start eating. Well, isn't that brave, or is he just plain stupid? He asked himself. Everyone watched on as Klaus started devouring the meal like someone who hadn't eaten anything in months. You're just coming from an inn. How could you be so hungry even after already eating? Richard looked at him oddly. Aren't you guys going to eat? Klaus asked with a mouthful of food. The others could barely hear what he was saying through his full mouth, and the bits of food coming out every time he said something. Gray and his friends soon dug in as well, only, not like him. Reynolds wanted to eat that way as well, but he wasn't as shameless as Klaus, so he ate with the proper etiquette. They ate for almost 20 minutes, and this was the worst 20 minutes in Smith's life. He didn't think there would be any other 20 minutes that would be as horrifying as this. The reason for this was simple, Klaus. While they were eating, Klaus would only speak when his mouth was full, thereby spraying bits of food from his mouth. What made it annoying was that since Klaus was sitting close to him, he would occasionally look in his direction when speaking. This meant that the bits of food he sprays out mostly got on his body. There was even a time and accidentally entered his mouth. How can a single person be this annoying? He wondered. If Klaus were to hear this question, he would most likely say, it's a gift. Smith reigned in his temper so he wouldn't lose it for the second time. Once he gets his hands on Klaus after they've been given the special wine, he would get his revenge. He had so many evil things planned out for him, that he couldn't even wait to start the torture. Just after they finished eating, Klaus asked a question that surprised even his friends. He first burped loudly without any manners before asking, so what's for dessert? 
Dessert. You've already eaten so much yet you're asking for dessert. Smith felt like beating him up right there and then. Hearing no response, Klaus explained thinking they didn't know what a dessert was while picking his teeth with his pinky finger. Dessert follows right after a meal. I know what a dessert is. Smith said through gritted teeth. Then why are you here? Chop chop, come on go get the dessert. Klaus did a waving motion with both hands. Chapter 235. Smith called the servants over to serve them dessert, which consisted of cakes, pudding, milk and eggs, pastry, and fruits. Klaus immediately started eating, but mostly focused on the cakes. Void who hadn't tasted something that had this much sugar was left amazed by almost every single dessert that had sugar in them. He would occasionally take a bit from one, then go to another. There was even a time when he used his space element to cut off a small piece of the cake while taking a slurp from the pudding. The taste was amazing. He was almost on cloud nine. I knew the outside world was amazing, he exclaimed. I don't think too much sugar is good for you, warned Gray. Gray almost always acted like an elder brother to Void. If others could hear their conversations sometimes, they would be shocked by how caring he was to this seemingly small cat who would almost always be ignored, if not for its eye-catching pitch black fur. It's okay, I'll just take a few more drinks and bites, after that, I'm done. Ten minutes later, Void could be seen lying on the table with both front paws on his now protruding stomach. He was lying close to Grey, who would occasionally shake his head whenever he takes a glance at Void. He would shake it even harder when he takes a glance at Klaus. Bits of cakes could be seen at the side of Klaus's mouth. If he remembered correctly, Klaus and Void were the ones who ate almost 70% of the desserts. Everyone except for Grey and Klaus looked at Void with shocked eyes, wondering how he managed to fit in so much into such a small body. Grey already knew he could eat much, while Klaus was too bothered about himself to think about Void. Klaus quickly circulated the elemental essence in his body to try to quickly digest the food and desserts he just ate. Crap, I ate too much. He complained internally. Ho! Void called out to Grey. He was getting a strange feeling inside. Yeah. Grey looked at him. Why do I feel like what I just ate wants to come back out, but from my mouth? Void asked a little confused. This was the first time something like this was happening to him. He usually mostly digests almost everything whenever he eats. But this was the first time he was feeling this way. That's called throwing up. I told you too much sugar wasn't good for you. Gray said without showing any emotion. What do I do now? Void asked. Seriously. Just threw up. Gray threw an apathetic glance at Void before looking in another direction. No. I can't let them go. They're good. Void refused. F-U-C-K. Gray cursed out unintentionally which attracted everyone's attention. How could someone refuse to throw up when the body wants to? Void's excuse was even crazier. Gray immediately decided to stop listening to him. But it was hard, especially when they were talking through a mind link. Shit. Void just throw up already. It's not like having the cakes inside you would change anything. Gray said after Void continued bugging him about it. But, but, you're probably going to explode if you refuse to throw up. Gray lied with a serious expression. What? I don't think that's possible. Void who was previously lying on the table tried to stand up. After a couple of seconds, he managed to struggle up, but his feet were wobbly. He tried standing but staggered a few times. Gray scoffed but didn't answer. He wanted to trick Void into throwing up, but he knew it wasn't going too easy. Although Void was smart, he still acts like a child in most situations. So Gray was a little confident his lie might be able to make him change his mind. Alice looked over a little concerned. What's wrong with him? He ate too much. Gray explained. Oh, he's so cute. Alice said looking at Void with her round eyes. Yeah, he's not going to be cute soon. Gray said. Why is that? Alice asked worriedly. Gray went on to tell her about Void refusing to throw up even when his body wanted him to. Alice giggled on hearing that Void refused to throw up. She stretched her hand over to Void and gently C-A-R-E-S said his fur. Hey, you should do what he said. She whispered to Void. While Alice and Gray were speaking, Klaus and Reynolds had seemed to become good friends with Smith, asking him all sorts of questions that mostly irritated the life out of him. Since we're done here, why don't we take some fresh air on the garden? Richard suggested. Sure. 
The others nodded before standing up, following behind him. But just like before, Klaus was at the forefront of the group, annoying Smith to no end. Gray refused to carry Void because of the fear of him throwing up on his body. Alice, on the other hand, happily carried him as they walked over to the garden. After going past two doors, they got to the garden. It was already dark when they came out since they spent almost an hour inside. But they didn't have a problem seeing the garden. Besides, the moon was already out. There was a variety of flowers in the garden. Roses, daisies, daffodils. Carved hedges depicted different magical beasts, including a dragon, a griffin, a wolf, and many more. There was also a small pond in the center of the garden. The garden was around 50 to 80 square meters. Having a 20 meter space in the middle, Gray and his friends guessed the space must have been there because of training. Even though it was quite small, it's enough for training. There were benches positioned on different parts of the garden. Klaus was the one who led them to a bench on the eastern side of the garden. This place is nice. He praised after taking a seat. Smith smiled but didn't reply. The group stayed there for about 30 minutes, with Klaus and Reynolds being the most active people, followed by Richard. Gray managed to convince Void to throw up. He didn't know if to cry or laugh because he had to actually beg Void to throw up. This was something that was for his benefit, yet he had to beg him because of his childishness. We would like to go to bed now. We still have a long journey ahead of us. Alice said, interrupting Klaus and Reynolds' storytelling. So soon. If that's the case, we'd like for you to taste this city's special wine before going to bed. Richard said sadly. Is it better than the ones we drank inside? Asked Klaus. Of course. Richard nodded. If that's the case, then what are you waiting for? Said Reynolds. Richard and Smith stood up going through the bag of the garden. Where's the antidote? Richard asked while they were going inside. It's inside, we'll drink it before coming out. Smith said with ruthlessness in his eyes. He wanted to make sure Klaus died a painful death. He hadn't hated anyone as much as he hated Klaus. If he were told he would hate someone this much, he would never believe it. Chapter 236 Back at the garden. Does anyone else find this suspicious? Gray asked the group. I do. Klaus and Alice nodded. Reynolds only nodded after a few seconds seemingly thinking of why the others find the situation suspicious. If my speculations are correct, then there should be something inside that special wine of theirs. I might also be wrong though, but I think they're definitely planning something against us. Gray voiced what he thought. They all knew that Richard and Smith didn't approach them for anything good, and given how much they hate Klaus in particular, they would rather die than give him a special wine. They might agree to give the others, but giving Klaus was definitely out of the picture. Yeah, from how that guy hates me, I think he would want to kill me more than anything else in the world. Klaus said with a chuckle. During their conversations, there had been times when he sensed a thick killing intent coming out from Smith's body, even Richard wasn't able to mask it sometimes. But he didn't give a shit what they were planning to do. In the face of overwhelming strength, schemes wouldn't save them. Each individual here could confidently say they would be able to one-shot either Richard or Smith. Even Klaus could kill them without much of a hassle. Then what do we do? Reynolds asked. Leave. Gray raised a brow. No, we need those coins. There's no way I'm walking back to Luna City. Klaus refused the idea of leaving. I could test it for you. Void who was lying on Alice's LAP said to Gray. Wait, wouldn't you be hurt by the poison? Gray asked curiously. Unless the poison can instantly kill a peak rank 6 magical beast. If not, I'm okay. Void said confidently. Wow, is your immunity to poison that high? Gray asked in surprise. Of course, even a rank 6 venomous magical beast can't kill me with their venom. Void stood proudly, trying to show off. Well, that's something. Gray was once again awed by Void's ability. If he counts properly, then a rank 6 magical beast should be on the plane above the overlord plane. That was the sage plane. Void was only a rank 4 magical beast, yet he wouldn't be affected by a rank 6 magical beast's venom. That was awesome. Guys, Void would test it out. Gray was 100% confident in Void. Since Void said he could do it, then it meant he could. After Void blocked that attack for him, his bond with him increased to an unimaginable level. If it were around 70% before, now, it was well over 100%. 
That's great, Klaus exclaimed. Is that safe? Alice asked in concern. Compared to Klaus, she cared about Void more than he did. If not for Void blocking the attack for Grey, then Klaus would barely have any sort of feelings for him. Yeah, he said he would be fine. Grey assured her. If that's the case, then okay. Alice C-A-R-E-S said Void's fur before adding. If you know you can't do it, then don't okay. Void nodded his small head which made Alice giggle. Grey and the other boys still didn't know what she always finds cute in whatever Void did. It's probably a lady's thing. They thought. What happens if it's not something we can dismiss? Reynolds suddenly asked an important question they all missed. If Void said the poison wasn't something they could purify if it enters their bodies, then that would be an issue, since rejecting the wine would be odd. We can always reject it. It's not like they can force us anyway. Klaus shrugged, not bothered by it. I can create a small space in your mouths that the wines would pass through, then transfer them behind those flowers, Void said. Is that possible? Grey asked. Of course. I can even create it now, Void said. Can you remove it any time? Asked Grey. Yup. Void nodded. Okay. Then do it now. Wait, can we talk when you do that? Grey asked to clarify things. It would be strange if they were unable to speak. I don't know. Okay, we'll do this. When they bring the drinks over, if it's not something you guys can purify, I'll create a small space when you all open your mouths. Void suggested. That's even better. Grey quickly agreed to this idea. After that all agreed to that, they waited for Richard and Smith with Klaus telling Void the plan. He didn't know where this city's treasury was, although he knew it was in the mayor's villa. He didn't know the exact position. Richard was the one who personally poured for each person, just as he was about to sit down. You missed someone. Klaus suddenly spoke up. Huh. Richard and Smith looked around a little confused. They were clearly only six people here, and they only came with six silver cups. So how did they miss someone? No, I think you're mistaken, we're only six here. Smith said, you're forgetting that little guy. Klaus pointed at Void. Ah, Richard was left speechless when he saw who Klaus was referring to. A cat. How dare he say I poured drink for a cat. Richard's lips twitched a couple of times. Isn't going back to get a cup for a cat a little too outrageous? He asked after he managed to compose himself. I know, that's why he should do it. Klaus pointed at Smith. Smith's eyes almost turned completely red from anger. Such disrespect. He couldn't take it anymore. Klaus chuckled when he saw his reaction. He passed his cup to Void before grabbing the jug of wine. I think this settles it. You're going to drink directly from the jug. Richard asked in surprise. Yes, is it bad? Klaus raised a brow. No, it's perfect, actually. Richard smiled. Klaus was the strongest of the group, so taking Klaus out first was even better. Void took a sip of the wine, while the others waited curiously for the result of his test. Chapter 237 Richard and Smith were a little taken aback when they saw that neither of them was drinking the wine. According to Klaus's previous behavior, he would usually instantly drink the wine as soon as he got hold of it. Damn, could it be that they figured it out? Smith asked himself with clenched fists. He brought his cup closer to his mouth and took a sip. He wanted to use this to convey to them that the wine was safe to drink. Even after taking a sip, he didn't see any reactions from the group. He took a glance at Richard, and just as he was about to ask the group why they weren't drinking, he saw them drinking simultaneously. Klaus held the wine jug and drank directly from it, with some wine dripping from the side of his mouth. Ha <laughs> ha, good wine. He praised after swallowing a mouthful. Grey and the others were a little more relaxed as they savored the taste of the wine, before gulping it down. Wow, it's great. Even Grey was forced to praise the wine. It was one of the best wines he had tasted. One has to know that he had drunk wine from one of the best places in the capital, the Jade Water Paradise. And there was a good difference between both. The taste of the wine was intense, yet elegant and full of fresh herbs, cherry, and multiple aromas and flavors. The sweet fruit notes persist from beginning to end, where the aftertaste is expansive. Terrific harmony and balance. Grey almost wanted to say, the wine was impeccable. After Void tasted the wine, he said they wouldn't have any problems with it given their planes. So he gave the others the nod to drink it. 
That was the only reason they drank it. And he had to say, he would have regretted not drinking this wine. Richard and Smith smiled even wider when they heard the praises Gray and his friends showered on the wine. Even Alice was no exception in throwing praises at it. He, now all we have to do is wait till it kicks in. Smith laughed evilly inside. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. This is the best wine our city has to offer. It is made in a special process, with a variety of fruits and herbs used as well. A lot of merchants come from far and wide to taste it. Unfortunately, it can't be mass-produced, since the method of producing it is quite difficult, and the family who made the recipe refused to share their secrets, explained Smith. Knowing that he would get what he wanted soon, he didn't mind explaining to them to pass up more time. What he placed in the wine would take at least 10 minutes or so to start taking effect. That was when the real fun would begin. This wine is a treasure. I don't expect the family to let go of that recipe. If I were in their position, I would also do the same. Gray said while waiting for the effect of the poison. He wanted to know what it was. He was a little anxious since he still hasn't been able to sense what the poison does. When he previously saw Richard and Smith take a mouthful of the wine, he thought there was a chance that the wine truly isn't poisoned. However, he also thought of the possibility of them already taking the antidote when they went in. After all, only one person could have brought out the wine and the cups. Gray took another sip from the wine. This time, he closed his eyes to savor the taste more. The wine was so good that he didn't think he had a problem drinking it over and over again. They all continued to take small sips, and before they knew it, 20 minutes had gone by. He decided to wait a little longer, maybe they're slightly resistant to it. Five minutes went by before Gray started sensing something. He couldn't help but click his tongue. So that's what it does, he thought calmly. He noticed an unfamiliar energy circulating in his body. What it was doing was out of his expectations. Instead of poisoning, what it did was slowly corrode their elemental essence, thereby making them unable to wield any element. They would then be reduced to normal people, but stronger in terms of physique, since their bodies grew stronger after every breakthrough. Gray circulated his elemental essence to try to fight against it, and he noticed that doing that actually increased the speed. But after using his spiritual energy as well, he was able to isolate the energy that wanted to block his elemental essence. He wasn't the only one who was sensing it. The others have sensed it as well, and they were also trying to stop it from taking any effect. Just like Grey, they tried circulating their elemental essences. But when they noticed it worsened the situation, they instantly stopped. Alice was the first to use her spiritual energy, followed by Klaus and then Reynolds. The group's extended quietness alerted Richard and Smith, and they both broke out into smiles. They knew what they mixed into the wine was starting to take effect. This was not their first time using it. So seeing the group's behavior, they were certain it had started working. Haha. <laughs> Finally, I don't need to take their bullshit anymore. Smith stood up laughing happily. Richard tried to stop him, but he pushed his hand away. There's no need. Since they've already drunk the wine, then they would all become normal people. I can already see the wine is starting to take effect. Okay, I don't think there's a need for our facade anymore. Richard smiled. Let the fun begin. He licked his lips lecherously as he approached Alice. Chapter 238 Gray was the first to get rid of the energy in his body. He looked at the others and realized it would take at least a few more seconds before they got rid of theirs. What are you doing? He asked Richard and Smith coolly. Oh, to think you're still able to keep calm even after knowing you can't wield any element truly praiseworthy. Richard chuckled. Stupid. Klaus said mockingly. What? Smith looked at Klaus in disbelief. When Gray spoke, he thought maybe Gray was pretending to still be normal. But Klaus also doing it meant that something was wrong. His expression changed a couple of times as he couldn't understand what was happening. Richard also had a shocked look when he saw Reynolds and Alice's calm expression. This wasn't an expression someone who couldn't wield any elements should have. Why that face? I'm sorry I hurt your feelings when I called you stupid. I honestly thought you already knew. Klaus continued mocking Smith. Smith almost spat out blood from anger. Klaus's taunts were annoying. How come it didn't work? He asked in surprise. Simple, we already took the antidote. Klaus said with a mocking smile. But, but. Ha ha. You're even stupider than I thought. How could you believe me when I said we took the antidote? Klaus laughed out loud as he interrupted Smith. 
He looked at Reynolds before taking a jab at him. And I thought you were the most stupid person I knew. You're the stupid one, moron. Reynolds retaliated fiercely. Richard and Smith looked at each other with disbelief present in their eyes. The only question in their minds was how. No need to be too surprised. This level of energy isn't enough to affect us, given how planes. Gray cleared their heads so they wouldn't be too surprised. What do you mean? It'll affect me, and I'm already in the origin plane. Much less arcane plane elementalists like you guys. Richard almost screamed out. Void. Gray looked at Void questioningly. Nope, we're alone. I'll isolate this area so even if they scream at the top of their voices, it wouldn't be heard. Void said before disappearing from Alice's LAP, shocking Richard and Smith. Though the dis Smith couldn't process what he wanted to say. He just saw a small black cat disappear without a trace. Richard was more shocked compared to him. His stage was higher, but he still didn't catch a glimpse of how Void moved that quickly. If the cat is this powerful, doesn't that mean? He looked at the youths in front of him in dread. We're not really at the arcane plane. Do you think we're stupid enough not to know you approached us with ill intent? Gray asked before taking a sip of the wine in his hand. Even after so long, he still hasn't finished his wine. He even almost had the urge of keeping it in his storage ring. But he had a better idea. But, but, I inspected your planes, and it was only at the arcane plane. The strongest of you all is that guy who is in the sixth stage. Richard stammered before pointing at Klaus. Hey, he wished. Reynolds scoffed. What do you mean I wish? I'm the strongest. Klaus glared at Reynolds. Ha ha, yes, you're the strongest from the back. Reynolds chuckled before mumbling the last part. What did you say? Asked Klaus. Nothing. Reynolds shook his head. H-M-P-H. Better. Klaus snorted before looking in Richard and Smith's direction. When he realized they were staring at him weirdly, he asked angrily. What are you bastards looking at? Reynolds and the others laughed at Klaus before focusing on the duo in front of them. I don't believe they're not in the arcane plane. First, they're too young to be in the arcane plane. Secondly, why would geniuses in the arcane plane come to such a small city? Richard refused to believe them. Yeah. Smith nodded. Guys, I think these guys have something wrong with their heads. Klaus said while staring at the duo. Forget about waiting for it to react. We can beat them even without it. Richard said while preparing to attack. He was an origin plane elementalist. Although not as strong as a real one, he still had a bit of confidence in himself. If he couldn't defeat these wimps who were at the 5th and 6th stage of the arcane plane, then it was a disgrace to his name. Yes, I don't have any problems with beating them up either. Leave that annoying brat to me. You take care of the rest. Smith said. He wanted to fight against Klaus. He couldn't give any other person the privilege of killing him. What? Do you hate me? Ha <laughs> ha. Join the queue. You're not the first person to hate me this much. Klaus said while laughing in delight. The number of people who hated Klaus was huge, with a mouth like his, added to his personality. It was hard for his enemies not to hate him. Gray and the others nodded when they heard this. They've seen too many people who Klaus had driven crazy with his words. It's amazing how he's still alive, given how much people hate him. Some are even willing to pay a huge sacrifice just to kill him. Gray, Klaus, Alice, and Reynolds all stayed in the same position without moving an inch. It's not that they didn't want to defend, but if they all made a move, then Richard and Smith would die within a second. Klaus, why don't you take care of this? Gray suggested. Nope, they're too weak. Reynolds should do it. Klaus said. Don't you want to beat that guy up? Gray waved his hand and used the wind element to deflect the fire stream coming towards them. Fine, but next time, you're fighting. Klaus said before standing up. Chapter 239. Richard stood rooted to the ground. Not expecting Gray was able to deflect his attack. With nothing more than a wave of his hand. Impossible. He refused to believe it. Smith, on the other hand, was already shaking. He could already see the power difference between them. He's not as stupid as Richard and refuses to believe what was in front of him. Please, spare me. He instantly begged for mercy. What was important now was keeping his life. Given how adamant he previously was to kill Klaus, he was sure Klaus wouldn't think twice before killing him. Klaus, who just stood up, looked at him in disgust. At least fight with pride. Boom. Richard attacked once again. This time, he sent out a huge fire stream, hoping to cover up the group with it. Haha, ha. 
I don't believe you guys are what you said you were. He laughed after seeing that his attack wasn't blocked this time. They waited for a few seconds, and the fire slowly started dying down. Looking closer, they didn't sense any movement from where the group was previously sitting. Haha, <laughs> you see, they were only posers. I think there was something that made the effect of the wine not affect them. Richard broke into a fit of laughter. Smith who was previously afraid looked around properly. After not sensing anything, he wanted to celebrate, but he was still slightly optimistic. He decided to celebrate after the fire died down completely, and was sure they had truly defeated Grey and the others. Just as Richard was about to turn around, Klaus's voice could be heard from the flames. You think this would actually hurt us? Ha! Huh. Don't make me laugh. He said in a must.emnt. Ha! Huh. Richard turned around. TSK TSK. Such a shame. This was a good garden. Klaus shook his head as he removed the ice wall that was in front of them. Gray and the others soon came into full view of Richard and Smith, and they noticed that they haven't even moved from their previous spot. Gray and Reynolds were even drinking and chatting casually, while Void had mysteriously appeared on Alice's LAP once again. The flowers around them had been destroyed, but the ones behind them were protected by the ice wall. I won't accept this attack together, Richard ordered. Okay. Smith nodded after managing to gather some confidence. Let's end this quickly. I still need to get some sleep, Klaus said nonchalantly. This wasn't a battle that would really bother him. All he wanted to do now was to rob the treasury of some coins before leaving. Once they've left this place, he would sleep peacefully in an inn. Richard sent a fireball towards Klaus, while Smith caused an earth spike to come out of the ground below Klaus. HMPH, ants. Klaus snorted before making ice rise from the ground, just as the earth spike was coming from the ground. Standing on top of the ice, he rose higher into the air. Bang. The ice pillar which rose along with Klaus was hit by the fireball that Richard sent over. But due to Klaus's high proficiency with ice, it couldn't break it. Richard sent another fireball at Klaus who was standing on the ice mid-air, and Klaus casually moved the ice, dodging all the fireballs coming his way. Don't let them go, it'll notify others, Gray said before using his water element to stop the fireballs before they exploded in the air, and drawing attention to them. He forgot Void isolated the area and acted unconsciously. It was only after destroying them did he recall it. It's not bad being a little too cautious, he thought. There's a chance that the fireball might draw attention to them. That was a chance he didn't want to take. Okay, boss. Klaus said sarcastically. Attack the pillar that's supporting him. Richard switched tactics. Since he couldn't hit Klaus while he was in the air, he would bring him down. Smith made an earth sword that he sent towards the pillar supporting Klaus in the air. Richard on the other hand sent a barrage of fire arrows towards it. Klaus raised both hands into the air exaggerating and a water wall rose almost 6 meters into the air, easily blocking the attacks sent out by Richard. Klaus stayed on the defensive for another minute, easily blocking the attacks of both Richard and Smith anytime they attacked. He was still mid-air, showing off his awesomeness. Time to end this. Klaus smirked. The ice pillar he was standing on top suddenly sunk into the ground. Boom. Ice smoke spread across the space in the garden, barring the vision of both Richard and Smith. Klaus casually moved around in the place, and before long, the smoke died down, with both Richard and Smith incapacitated. The pond at the center of the garden was also frozen solid. They were currently unable to use their elements, and their feet were frozen to the ground. I initially planned to kill you, but you have a more important use, Klaus said while standing in front of Smith. After saying that, he walked to where Richard was frozen, you on the other hand are very useless. But killing you now is no fun. Richard looked at him with hateful eyes, but said confidently, You can't kill me. My father is an overlord plane expert. You can't afford to offend someone like him. Haha, <laughs> you think you can threaten me with that? I'll kill you if I want to, even if your father was the emperor. Klaus laughed it off but didn't kill him yet. He walked back to where Smith was standing. Now, tell me, where is the Mez treasury? Chapter 240 what? Smith asked with a confused expression, not expecting Klaus to ask such a question. You heard me, where's the mayor's treasury? Klaus looked at him coldly. It's in the villa. Smith said hurriedly. I know it's in the villa. I just need to know where. Klaus had the urge of smacking him in the face. 
That that you see. Smith tried to look for a way to evade the question. Trying to avoid the question. The funny thing is that your life depends on the answer I get. Klaus shrugged. He could guess the area where the mayor's treasury was located. But it would take a lot of time to pinpoint its actual location. Why go through that stress when he could just get the location from Smith? Hearing the threat, Smith gulped and threw a glance at Richard, hoping that he might be able to say something that would save them. I see no reason why you're placing your hopes on someone who can't even save himself, much less you. Klaus followed his gaze and realized he was staring at Richard. Smith refused to tell him the location of the mayor's treasury. It's not even yours. Why are you protecting it that much? Klaus was left stumped by his stubbornness. I'll do that to the other guy. That should scare him, he thought. Hey Gray, hope there's no way for sounds to get out of this place. He asked to confirm. He was planning on using his self-named technique, the Nutcracker. It has been a while since he used it. But it looks like it's time to bring out the big guns once again. Yeah, Void isolated the place. Gray nodded. When he saw Klaus's smile after getting confirmation, he immediately knew he was planning to do something evil. Seeing the position Richard was in, a chill went down his spine. Don't tell me he's about to use that question mark. He got to affirmation when he saw Klaus preparing for a run up. Alice, you shouldn't watch this. Gray and Reynolds hastily turned around. Thinking about it always scares them. Watching someone experience it scares them even more. Alice nodded and turned around as well. If you don't speak, you'll be the next. Klaus said before running in Richard's direction. Why are you coming towards me? Stay away. Richard yelled. He had a bad premonition about what Klaus was about to do to him. Smith stared wide-eyed as Klaus got close to Richard, whose leg was wide opened. That was when he saw one of the scariest things of his life. Klaus drew his right foot backward, before releasing a frightening kick to Richard's crotch region. Bam. Crack. The sound of something cracking rang out in the garden. Richard's premonition came to pass as an unbearable pain came from his crotch region. He didn't pass out immediately from the pain. Ah. Uh, he screamed at the top of his lungs. The shock and the pain he was feeling were what finally knocked him out. This was a pain that staying conscious made worse, so it was better if he passed out. He didn't even care if he was killed in the process. He just wanted the pain to stop. Hair never gets old. Klaus looked at Richard with a hint of a must.emment. Someday, this technique will be known all over the world, thought Klaus. You see that? Now start talking. Klaus said pointing at Richard when he saw Smith's expression. He added, also, unlike what he's currently going through, I'll make sure you don't pass out and feel double the pain. Smith almost fainted on the spot. If he hated Klaus previously, now, he dreaded him. Klaus was the most psychotic person he had ever seen. How would a guy do this to another guy when he fully knows how much it hurts? Klaus slowly started approaching Smith, preparing to start his run-up. There's a secret passageway in my father's room. You'll find the treasury there? Smith blurted out everything he knew. He told Klaus how to get to the mayor's room without being spotted. But since it was already late, the mayor would most likely be in his room. When the group previously came to the villa, other than when they were inspected at the gate, and when the servants brought the food over, they didn't see others. They haven't encountered any other guards nor servants. They were quite surprised about this, and couldn't help but ask Smith the reason for this. The answer Smith gave to them was that most of them were dismissed by the mayor. According to him, the mayor seemed to be expecting some important guests, and having too many people in the villa wasn't a good thing. This seems suspicious. Said Alice. Yes, we need to complete what we want to do and leave immediately. Gray said seriously. He recalled how the guards checked the carriage properly before letting them in, making it all click. Since the mayor was being that thorough with the people who entered the villa, it was a testament to how important the guests were. Yeah. Klaus nodded. Who are these important guests? Gray tried to see if Smith knew the people. I don't know, Smith answered. From his response, Gray guessed he wasn't lying. He also thought of the possibility of him being a good liar as well. Okay, now that his question has been answered, I have one as well. Do you still have more of this wine? Gray asked pointing at the wine jug. Yes, such an important item, to think I forgot about it. Well, do you? Klaus lightly smacked his head when he heard this. He also thought of asking for more of the wine, but the coins came first. Yes, 
I have one more jug in my room, and there should be others in the treasury. Smith nodded hastily. Chapter 241 They decided to get the wine from Smith's room first, before heading over to the mez room. Smith gave them a rough description of the villa. So they had some knowledge about where was where. How about him? What do we do to him? Reynolds pointed at Richard. Alice. Gray looked at her. She had the final decision on what would happen to Richard. If she took pity on him and decided they should let him go, then he should count himself lucky. But the group knew given Alice's personality, she probably wouldn't want him to live because of what he thought of doing to her. Kill him, keeping him alive doesn't change anything. Alice said decisively. According to what Smith said, Richard didn't come with the important guests, which meant he wasn't of any use. The group planned to keep Smith alive, since he could be used as leverage if by chance things didn't go as planned. They didn't know the strength of the guests the mayor received. However, Gray was a little hopeful since Void said he only sensed a single person, who should either be in the origin plane or close to it. Klaus walked closer to the unconscious Richard before fl.ickning his hand. Multiple ice shards came from the ground piercing Richard's body. Richard died a quick death. He didn't even know what killed him. Klaus went on to further tap a finger on his body, freezing him entirely. Apostrophe Psy if only my ice ability has gotten to that level. I would have been able to freeze him, then break him into smithereens, leaving no evidence behind. He thought sadly. He moved to the pond, touched it, taking it back to its previous state when it was filled with water. He looked around before finding a perfect spot. Gray, come here, he called Gray over. When Gray got there, he told him what he wanted to do, and Gray agreed to it. He wanted to keep Richard's corpse hidden from the world. Question mark, so he had Gray carve an opening inside the pond, on its walls. He calmly placed the frozen corpse in the pond before manipulating the water to move it to the opening. Gray sealed it up, and it was like Richard was never here. If only we could find a way to fix the garden, then we wouldn't need to be afraid of it alerting the guards here. Gray said thoughtfully, It doesn't matter, we should get to work now, and leave as soon as possible, suggested Klaus. The others nodded before using the same back door Richard and Smith used, when they went to get the wine for them. Reynolds was the one tasked with carrying the unconscious Smith on his shoulder, which annoyed him, but excited Klaus. It was almost like the duo found each other's suffering funny. That was why they always laughed at each other whenever one of them was suffering. Void was the one who the group sent ahead. He would alert them if there were any guards or servants around. After going through two halls and three turns, they got to Smith's room within three minutes. When they entered the room, Gray looked around to locate the place Smith said he hid the wine. The room spanned about 15 square meters, with a large bed located in it. It surprisingly also had a table and chair, that were positioned close to the window which was wide opened, with the curtains hanging on his side. Looking to the extreme left corner of the room, Gray found the place he could use in going into the bathroom. He said he kept it there. He cautiously walked towards it, entering the bathroom room. He saw a bathtub, as well as some towels and a closet, where a large CHEST was located. Gray walked closer to inspect the CHEST. It looked a little worn out, which was strange given Smith's status. He's a strange one, Gray said as he pushed the CHEST to the side. He gently tapped on the spot where the CHEST was previously on. He could tell it was hollow from the sound he heard, Smith only created a thin wall to block it. Being an earth elementalist, he tapped his finger on it once again, but this time, the outcome was different from the previous time when it only made a sound. The thin wall Smith previously created moved to the side with little to no effort, and Gray was left speechless by the number of wine jugs he found in there. There were at least 20 in there. This guy sure does love his wines. He thought internally while searching for the wine Smith brought out. It took a while, but he finally found it after almost two minutes of tasting the different wines. He kept some that he found good while he left the rest. After keeping the wines, he left the bathroom. The others were waiting for him in the room. Reynolds placed Smith on the bed, since carrying him constantly was uncomfortable. Klaus and Alice were sitting on the bed. They all looked in his direction when they heard his footsteps. We should Gray froze mid-sentence before continuing. Hide, someone's coming. He quickly went back to the bathroom, hiding in the closet. 
Klaus and Reynolds hid under the bed, while Alice hid behind the curtain that was on the window. They left Smith on the bed, trying to make it seem like he was already asleep. Tap, tap, creak. The footsteps increased before a lady walked in. She looked to be around her late twenties, and from her clothes, it was easy to tell that she was a maid in the villa. She had deep brown long hair, a slender and well-curved body, a slightly average-looking oval face, and blue eyes. Young lord, are you asleep? She asked while blinking her long eyelashes as she approached the bed. Getting no response from the unconscious Smith, she walked over to the bathroom. I'll go freshen up. This wasn't the first time Smith was keeping her quiet. But whenever she gets on the bed, he would always hold her tight as if afraid she would disappear the next moment. Klaus and Reynolds who heard this looked at each other with regret deep in their eyes. Why didn't I hide in the bathroom? Chapter 242 Gray stood in the closet and created a wall that made it seem like he wasn't there. It would be hard for Smith who frequently used the bathroom to notice the small change, much less a maid who used it once in a while. He created a hole for his eyes, so he could see the entire bathroom perfectly. He was a little stunned when he heard the voice of a lady, saying she wanted to freshen up. It shouldn't be what I think it is. He shook his head. Unlike Klaus and Reynolds, he hadn't been with a lady before. He doesn't even think of it, since he placed all his focus on getting stronger. Whenever he hung out with them, other than drinking wine, he did nothing else. When the lady walked into the bathroom, she immediately started taking off her clothes, leaving Grey, and surprisingly Klaus and Reynolds who weren't here in despair. Grey felt despair because he didn't want to see what was currently happening in front of him. Klaus and Reynolds on the other hand, wanted to very much see something like this. They wouldn't mind changing positions with him right now. Ah, that isn't in its right position. The young lady who had already removed her gown and UNDERWEAR and was currently unclad, walked closer to the closet. Even though she only occasionally uses Smith's bathroom, she knew exactly how he always kept the CHEST where he keeps his clothes. As soon as she got close to the CHEST, the scent of wine wafted all around the closet. Looks like he's drunk again. I'll get a good rest then, she mumbled softly. Smith shared some of his secrets with her, so she knew of his stash of wine under his CHEST. Thinking this was the cause of it, she turned around and walked over to the bathtub. I need to get out of this place right now, he thought inside. The young lady poured the hot water she had previously prepared, before Grey and the others came into the room into the bathtub before soaking in it, closing her eyes in the process. She was exhausted from the day's work, so finding out that Smith was asleep elated her. While Gray was thinking of how he could leave the bathroom, Klaus and Reynolds were thinking of how they could get into the bathroom. Void. Gray called on the only individual he knew could help him in his current strange predicament. What can I help you with? Void was previously in the room, but he went out after the young lady walked in. I need your help, you need to knock her out. Wait for about a minute or two so it wouldn't look suspicious. Gray said. Okay. Void replied before appearing in the bathroom. Given his small size, it was almost impossible for the young lady, or anyone else to notice him. Two minutes quickly went by, and the young lady was just starting to feel extra relaxed in the bathtub. Void soon appeared behind her and did what looked like a chop with his small paw. The young lady didn't even feel anything before passing out. Phew, thanks. Gray removed the wall that he used in hiding himself before breathing out a sigh of relief. He quickly exited the bathroom, not wanting to see any more, but was stunned when he almost bumped into Klaus and Reynolds, who seemed to be about to walk into the bathroom. What are you guys doing? He asked suspiciously. Knowing the duo, he was sure they were up to no good. Oh, you're out, you see, we wanted to come to save you, explained Klaus who for some reason continued sneaking towards the bathroom. Reynolds on the other hand stood still, since he wasn't as shameless as Klaus. I'm here now, why are you still walking over there? Gray looked at Klaus speechlessly. I want to make sure you didn't leave any traces of your appearance there. Klaus said in a serious tone. Shameless pervert, if you take a step into the bathroom, I'll break your legs. Alice came out when she overheard the boys talking. Klaus was currently standing at the entrance of the bathroom. He could already see the young lady's head and her hair which was floating on top of the water. If he walks a little bit further, 
he might be able to see the unclad lady who was currently unconscious. But Alice's threat wasn't something he could shrug off. It'll be a shame if we were found out because of Gray's carelessness. You know how careless he is. All I want to do is a quick sweep of the area. It wouldn't take more than a minute. Klaus tried persuading Alice, giving up when he was already this close, wasn't something he could accept so easily. I'll not only break your legs, but I'll also break your hands as well. Alice said coldly. F-U-C-K. How unlucky. Klaus cursed out in frustration, but in the end, he could only take another glance at the head of the young lady before turning around. Good boy, now carry him. Alice patted his cheek before pointing at Smith. But I thought it was Reynolds's job. Klaus protested. It was, but now it's yours. Have a problem with that. Alice raised a brow while smiling. Her smile sent goosebumps all over Klaus's body. Reynolds laughed on seeing Klaus's misery. Luckily, he wasn't as shameless as Klaus. So he didn't follow him after they bumped into Grey. Klaus reluctantly carried Smith on his shoulder with a long face. Which caused Grey and Reynolds to start laughing at him. What are you laughing at? It'll soon get to your turn. We'll see who will be laughing then. Klaus snorted coldly before walking towards the door. Alice was unsurprisingly the only one who could bully all three of them. And just as Klaus said, it would get to either of the laughing duo's turn soon. Chapter 243 The group soon left Smith's room, with Void taking the lead just like the first time. According to what Smith said, the mayor's room was located at the heart of the main building. Smith's room was in the right wing of the building. Now, the group had to move from Smith's room to the mayor's room, without being spotted by either the guards or the servants in the villa. Even with Void leading the group, it still took them almost 10 minutes to safely navigate from the right wing to the main building, without being sensed or spotted. After sneaking into the main building, their speed decreased exponentially due to the dramatic increase of the guards there. I thought that guy said most of the guards were sent away. Klaus couldn't help but ask in frustration when the group was stuck in a hallway for almost 5 minutes. They were currently hiding behind a small tree-like decoration in a hallway. But moving forward or retreating was impossible, because there was not only a guard ahead of them, but there was one behind them as well. Looks like he wasn't completely honest with the information he gave us. Gray furrowed his brow while communicating with Void who was ahead of them, trying to seek a better path for them. Seeing the situation, Reynolds suggested, why don't we knock out the guards instead of staying here for so long? No, if a single guard goes missing, it will probably give us away. Gray said thoughtfully, Void should try distracting the guard ahead of us. The longer we stay here, the greater the chances of us being discovered. You all should know that a guard will eventually patrol through that garden. I don't need to tell you what would happen when they see the state of the garden. Alice said after a while. Gray nodded before telling Void to find a way to distract the guard ahead of them, so they could continue advancing. It took almost two minutes before Void managed to distract the guard that was ahead of them. As soon as Void told them it clear, they quickly dashed forward. Ten minutes later, they were already only a few turns away from the mayor's room. And they noticed that the closer they got to the mayor's room, the lesser the guards were which was actually weird. Since it should be the closer they got to the mayor's room, the higher the guards there. Does anyone else find this fishy? Gray asked looking at the completely free passage ahead of them. Void had scouted from their current location up to the mayor's room. And he didn't find a single guard on the way. All the rooms along the way were also empty. Yeah. Do you think it has anything to do with the guests the mayor received? Klaus nodded. He initially wanted to rub his chin with his right hand. But he was carrying Smith on his right shoulder which made it extremely difficult for him to do. He couldn't help but glare at Alice while she wasn't looking at him. Possibly, replied Gray. Standing here and contemplating wouldn't change anything. Let's get those coins and be out of here, Reynolds urged. The group cautiously advanced closer to the mayor's room. After walking for almost one minute unhindered, they saw the mayor's room. Void had already scouted it, and there was no one inside. The mayor was most likely with his guests. The group didn't delay and quickly entered the room. Compared to Smith's room, this one was almost twice its size, and it had more decorations, couches, and a table and chair. There was also a small bookshelf close to the table that was located close to the window. What looked like the fur of a bear-like magical beast was used as a center carpet in the room. Klaus immediately dropped Smith on the center carpet, 
Since his shoulder was already starting to feel numb from carrying him for so long, he located the switch to open the secret passage which was close to the bed. Luckily, Smith didn't lie about it. The secret passage opened up, but not in the room. Klaus followed the sound, and it was just like Smith said, it was on the wall in the bathroom. Since they were short on time, Gray and Klaus quickly went in, while Void went outside to keep an eye out, so someone wouldn't come in when the group was still inside. After walking through the passageway for almost a minute, they got to the treasury. And it was just like it was called a treasury. There were weapons, armors, herbs, some low-level natural treasures, and so on. Klaus looked around and quickly located the spot where the coins were kept. Gold or silver? He asked Grey. Although there were copper coins, he didn't put them in his eyes. Is that a question? Step aside. Gray pushed him aside as he quickly started taking gold and silver coins. The number of gold coins here was around 5,000 to 7,000. Gray took just over 4,000, while for the silver coins that were over 50,000, he took around 10,000. This is more than enough, we should get going. Gray turned around after keeping the coins. The reason Klaus wanted to rob this place was so that they could afford horses. But seeing so many coins, Gray decided to take more. It doesn't really change anything if they took a few or if they took more. The mayor would still try to catch them and possibly kill them if he found out about it. The duo left the treasury without touching anything else. It wasn't like they didn't want to. But the items there were too low level for them. They would only be effective on elementalists below the origin plane. After leaving the bathroom, the group left the mayor's room, preparing to escape from the villa without being spotted. So far, it has been quite successful since they haven't been spotted, nor had the guards been alarmed. But with that guard in there, it was only a matter of time before someone finds out about their existence in the villa. Chapter 244 they decided to pass through the same route they used in coming here. While the group got to the second turn, they were forced to use another route when they saw two guards discussing on the path. Void even tried distracting them, but only one left to check it out, so they couldn't pass through it. The route they were currently using wasn't much different from the other one, they would occasionally hide for extended time periods before moving. They continued walking for almost five minutes before noticing a decrease in the number of guards. Although the number of guards decreased, the stages of the guards that were patrolling the halls and hallways saw an increase. Even a fool would know that there was something important going on in this part of the villa. With the absence of the mayor in his room and the so-called important guest Smith talked about, the group was able to connect the dots. Unknown to the group, the part they were currently passing through would take them past the mayor's personal office in the villa. This office was different from the one the occupants of the city knows about. The group soon got close to the mayor's office and two guards could be seen standing in front of the huge double door that led to the office. Of all the guards that the group had seen, they were the strongest being in the eighth stage of the arcane plane. Gray and his friends were currently looking at them from where they were hiding. Reynolds couldn't help but look at the door curiously. What do you think is going on there? Nothing that we should concern ourselves with, we should take another route and leave this place. Gray didn't want them to involve themselves in what wouldn't bring them any good. Since he had collected the coins, all he wanted was to leave this place. Had they been outside the building, he would have already charged out of the villa. But running out now is a little complicated, since they would have to face more guards. Crap. Why didn't think of this earlier? Klaus smacked the back of Reynolds's head as he exclaimed softly. Why did you smack my head? Reynolds asked with a long face. Cause I was just hit with an idea. And if I don't smack my head, it wouldn't be dramatic. Unfortunately, I can't smack mine. And since you were standing right in front of me, I thought why not? Klaus shrugged with a smirk, annoying Reynolds. Reynolds glared at him. But Klaus acted as nothing happened. He even threw him a challenging look like he couldn't do anything to him. Stop this the two of you. Klaus, what brilliant idea do you have now? Alice stopped the two before they started bickering. It's quite simple actually, instead of passing through so many twists and turns, why don't we just go through a window or something? There's an empty room right there, and passing through a window would take us directly outside. Klaus explained. Oh, that's simple and very fast. Gray nodded. Unlike the first time where they needed to stay in the building to locate the mayor's room, now they didn't need to be inside. After all, 
they were trying to go outside. It doesn't matter how they went outside, be it the door or the window, it all gave them the same result. Of course, I'm brilliant, what else do you expect from me? Klaus smiled while looking at Reynolds demeaningly. It was like he was asking him if he was smart enough to think of something like this. Reynolds almost went crazy when he saw this, but he was reined in by Grey, who was standing close to him. Let's get out of this place, Alice said as the group silently went into the room that was close to them. After going into the room, they went over the window, landing in the bushes behind the window. They stayed close to the walls and continued walking. Huh, do you guys hear that? Klaus looked at the others who were behind him. The group was currently standing close to a window, and they could hear voices from inside. If they guessed correctly, this was the mayor's office. Gray and the others nodded with serious expressions. This was something they didn't think they would hear. Klaus peeked through the window, and he saw ten men and three women sitting inside, having a heated discussion. The man on the mayor's seat had a complicated look on his face. Inside the office, I've already kept over 5,000 of your soldiers in the mountains. If more were to join them, it will certainly give us away. The middle-aged man in the mayor's seat said with a serious expression. This is a small city, your empire doesn't care about it. There's no way they would find out about this since they missed the first ones. One of the ladies who was sitting at the right side said, You're not understanding me. I'm taking a great risk doing this for you people. If I'm caught, my entire family risk annihilation. Hiding 5,000 soldiers is my limit anymore, and the increased activity might alert the empire. The mayor said, we offered you a price, and you accepted. Now, you'll do as we say. A younger looking man said calmly, but, there are no buts. The soldiers would be coming in a week's time. We do not want any mishaps. The young man interrupted the mayor. Fine, but you will have to increase the offer. The mayor said through gritted teeth, that's fine with us, but make sure to keep this tight. The war would begin soon, and these soldiers are who would take this empire down. An elderly man said, just as they were about to continue, the mayor's door was knocked quickly. My lord, there are intruders in the villa. A yell came from outside. Chapter 245. What? The mayor stood up in surprise. The others who were in the office also stood up alongside the mayor. The garden on the right wing by young Lord Smith's room was destroyed. It was presumably caused by a fire attack. The guard outside reported. And where is Smith? The mayor asked angrily. He is nowhere to be found, neither is Master Richard, replied the guard. They still haven't returned. The mayor asked with a strange expression. They returned my lord alongside four youngsters. But neither they nor the youngsters have been found, answered the guard. Could they have left the villa? The mayor asked a little confused. No, my lord. The guards at the gates didn't see anyone leaving after they came in. This means they are still in the villa. The guard replied. The mayor looked at his guests with a little concerned face. Please stay here. I assure you, this isn't something to worry about. I'll settle it soon. Hum, do we need to be worried? One of the ladies asked the others with a thoughtful expression. No, they're just kids. Let's wait so we can finalize everything with the mayor. The longer we stay in this villa, the higher the chances of us getting found out. An elderly man said. The others nodded before taking their seats. This wasn't something they should concern themselves over. Outside the building. Shit. 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 They're people from the Azure Empire. Klaus whispered with a shocked expression. He couldn't believe what he was hearing, nor seeing. What the hell are people from the Azure Empire doing in the Killen Empire? And in a mayor's villa for that matter. Looks like the coming war is inevitable. We need to get to the academy and report this to the principal. He'll know what to do with such pieces of information. Alice suggested. The others nodded before they started to sneak off once again. They've not only stolen from the treasury. But they've also found out about a shocking secret. The Azure Empire was deploying soldiers into the Killen Empire in preparation for the war. This was insane. Grey was the one leading the group now, with Klaus at the end of the group. Due to the shock they got from this unexpected discovery, none of them realized that Smith had already gained consciousness. He sensibly kept his eyes shut and regulated his breathing. 
so he wouldn't be found out by the group. Just as the group crossed the mayor's office window, he decided to take the risk of alerting the guards of their location. He took a peek at where they were, and he quickly recognized the mayor's window. He also realized that he could freely use his elemental essence once again, which gave him a sense of relief. The guards close to father's office are always there. This is my chance to escape. Smith thought to himself, even though he knew if those guards came to his rescue, they would most likely die, since they were not Grey or his friend's match. But he hoped they would at least be able to distract them so he could escape. Being an Earth Elementalist, it would be easier for him to cause a disturbance, since all he needed to do was create a hole in the wall of the mayor's office. That would definitely attract attention. It will not only attract attention, but it's stealthier, giving him more time before Grey or his friends finds out he was awake. The group was just about to completely leave the mayor's office's area, when Smith secretly tried to create a hole on the wall, hoping to directly expose the group to the people in the mayor's office. Huh. Gray suddenly stopped when he sensed the sudden higher activity of the earth particles around the area. What's wrong? Alice asked. Oh no. Gray wore a serious expression when he saw the hole that was being created on the wall. It was already over a meter wide which had attracted the attention of the people in the office. Gray could see the people in the office standing, and looking at the hole with shocked expressions. Mayor, they're here. One of the ladies called on the mayor who was outside speaking to his guards. Crap, that bastard is awake. Gray cursed out before blocking the hole on the wall, as well as the window with an ice wall. What? But he's still oh crap. Klaus was about to say Smith was still asleep, but he quickly threw him off his shoulder before freezing his arms and legs to the wall. Who we wanted to use as leverage actually turned out to be bad luck. Shit. How unlucky can we get? Reynolds said with a little remorse. Gray instantly sent a lightning blade straight for Smith's heart. He wasn't useful anymore, so he wanted to get rid of him, since he was the only one left who had a good look at their faces. While Gray and the others were about to kill Smith, the mayor and his guards were already inside the office. Without any delays, they quickly attacked the ice wall. But to their surprise, it didn't break instantly like what they expected. Some cracks ran across it, but it didn't fall apart even after the second wave of attacks, it still didn't fall apart. The mayor and his guards were all still in the arcane plane, although it was the peak of it they wouldn't be able to destroy Grey's ice so easily. Had Klaus being the one who created this ice, then it would have been almost impossible for them to break through it within one hour. Attack with me. We can't allow the news of you guys being here to spread out. The mayor begged the guests who were still in their seats. Chapter 246 The mayor couldn't believe Smith would bring people into the villa at a time like this when he was expecting important guests. Even after dismissing some of the guards to show everyone in the villa how important the guests were, his son still foolishly brought people in. I'll deal with him once this is over. The mayor thought angrily. The representatives from the Azura Empire stood up and joined him in breaking the ice wall. When they noticed how hard it was, the younger man amongst them improvised and destroyed the earth and wall that was there all this while. This allowed them to see Grey and his friends as he was about to kill Smith. When Smith saw Grey's lightning blade coming towards him, he immediately created an earth wall, as well as an earth armor around his body, to help block against the attack. Bam! The lightning blade easily passed through the earth wall and aimed at Smith's heart even with the earth armor there. Despair was the only thing present in Smith's eyes, as he watched the lightning blade slowly penetrating his earth armor. Stop. The mayor who was still inside the building yelled loudly. The lightning blade which had already penetrated through the earth armor and just started piercing into Smith's chest stopped. Smith who had his eyes closed, seemingly waiting for death, was surprised when he noticed he was still alive. He slowly opened his eyes and realized that although the lightning blade was still there, it wasn't moving. Because of the fear of dying, he wasn't actually feeling the pain of the blade that had pierced a few centimeters into his chest. Let us go and your son will live. Gray turned around to look at the mayor. His face was covered by an ice mask, which only left his eyes open. The mayor was caught in a dilemma when he heard their requests. If he let Gray and his friends go, then there was a chance that not only would he die, but his son who he was trying to protect will die as well. Father, please save me. Smith begged when he saw that there was a possibility that he might be saved. 
The mayor didn't think long before making his decision, attack. Some of the guards that were inside had moved outside, while the mayor and the others were here trying to break through the wall. Not just that, but all the guards outside were running in this direction, a few were already hiding around, while some hadn't gotten to this place yet. Hearing the mayor's order, the guards who were inside and outside, attacked Gray and his friends instantly. Smith was gripped by fear and shock when he heard his father's order. His father left him to die, he couldn't believe his father would do this to him. Your stupidity, as well as your father, was the cause of your death, remember that? Gray said as he drove the blade deeper into his C-H-E-S-T, piercing his heart. Klaus, Alice, Reynolds, and Void blocked the attacks that the guards and the mayor sent their way as Gray killed Smith. Smith stared at his father in shock as blood started flowing out of his mouth. He could see a slight pain in his father's eyes. But what was more present was fear. You're a smart man. This is the reason we made a deal with you in the first place. The young man from the Azure Empire said as they all came out of the building and attacked Grey and his friends as well. He's not my only son. Allowing these people to escape will cause the death of my other children as well. Why not sacrifice one to save the others? The mayor hid the pain in his heart and said, Although his son was stupid, he was still his son. No parent would wish for their child to die, especially in front of them. Gray and the others started defending as they moved towards the fence surrounding the villa. They plan to escape, since they've acquired more than they originally planned for. Although facing so many attacks was a little pressurizing, they tried their best to keep calm and collected. Boom. Within a minute or so, the number of guards has increased to over 20, added with the mayor and his guests who were all at the peak of the arcane plane. It was getting a little hard to advance because of the numbers. No need to hold back. Go all out, Gray ordered. Since all they needed to do was escape, so there was no use in reserving their strengths. A single attack from any of them is not something anyone among the mayor's guards could defend against. They continued blocking the different elemental attacks coming towards them from the guards as well as the mayor, while also attacking to create an opening. Buzz. Lightning rumbled as Alice sent out a huge lightning attack. It was none other than lightning rain, but on a larger scale compared to the ones Gray and Reynolds have previously used. Bang, bam, over 10 guards were caught by the attack immobilizing a few, while killing some. But even with this causality, the number of guards increased instead, more were rushing towards this place. The battle had been going on for almost two minutes, and Gray and his friends were already over halfway across the villa. It would take a minute or so for them to get to the fence. Klaus did a large-scale attack ice attack, multiple ice shards appeared mid-air, before shooting straight at the guards who were gathered in a particular area. It was a massacre. The group hadn't been touched by any of their opponent's attacks, yet they have killed over 20 guards with only two attacks. Reynolds sent lightning arrows towards the mayor's group, but it was blocked. Something's wrong, Void suddenly said to Grey. Chapter 247 Gray, who was about to attack, looked at Void a little puzzled. What's it? Weren't those guys previously in the arcane plane? Void appeared on Gray's shoulder, pointing his paw at the mayor's guests who were from the Azure Empire. Yeah, did any oh crap? Gray nodded, and just as he was about to ask what was wrong, he noticed it. The mayor's guests who were previously in the peak of the arcane plane, were currently all in the first stage of the origin plane. How how's this possible? Gray couldn't believe what was happening. It must be a special technique since I was unable to sense them. The technique should also have a disadvantage because if they were truly above the arcane plane, they would have been able to sense us when we were watching from the window earlier. Void deduced. Hum, this is bad. We need to leave immediately. Ray, full power, there's trouble. Gray said when he noticed Reynolds didn't summon the elemental warrior. What's up? Klaus asked after casually destroying an attack sent towards them. Those guys, they just went from the peak of the arcane plane to the first stage of the origin plane in a matter of minutes. And from the looks of it, they haven't stopped increasing their stages yet. Gray explained to the others. What? I thought Void said it was safe. Klaus asked with a shocked expression, not forgetting to take a glance at the mayor's guests. Which shocked him even more, because they had just gone from the first stage to the second stage of the origin plane. That's, that's F-U-C-K. He exclaimed with a look of panic. At this rate, the mayor's guests would reach the third stage in three or four minutes. 
There were 10 of them. How the hell do they expect them to fight against that? Especially when being bombarded by the Mez guards. Ray, why haven't you summoned it yet? Gray asked when he noticed Reynolds still haven't summoned his elemental warrior. Shit. It hasn't even been up to a minute. Reynolds complained before quickly trying to summon the elemental warrior. We need to leave before this gets out of hand. Alice advised while sending out a barrage of lightning bolts towards the guards that were coming towards them. Gray was well aware of this. But leaving wasn't easy, since they had to first find a way to escape from these guards. When he saw the number of attacks sent towards them, he quickly created an earth wall, hoping to block it. The young man amongst the group looked at Gray and his friends a little surprised by their strength, although he couldn't see their faces. He guessed they were above 21 years old yet. If he knew they were only around 17 and 18, he would be extremely shocked. They should be killed, these are geniuses. He said casually as he launched a large wind blade at the earth wall, that Gray set up to block the attacks that the guards sent their way. Bam. The wind blade cut the wall, but it didn't destroy it as the young man expected. Oh, they're even better than I thought. He said softly before preparing another attack. Boom. What followed was the complete destruction of the wall. But as soon as the wall was destroyed, Gray and his friends rained attacks at the guards. Gray created a large fire blade that he slashed horizontally across the open ground, killing multiple guards and wounding more. Klaus and Alice used aerial attacks, with both sending out ice shards and lightning arrows at the guards. In a matter of seconds, their attacks had killed almost 30 guards. This was already almost half the number of guards that were here fighting against them. Just when the guards thought it was over, a silver figure dashed into their midst, swinging a lightning spear left and right, harvesting more lives. It was none other than the elemental warrior. It was a one-sided massacre. Void who was previously on Gray's shoulder is currently nowhere to be found. It was unknown when he disappeared, and where he was currently located. The mayor was shocked when he saw how quickly the intruders managed to kill over half of the guards that were here. Some of these guards were people he was barely stronger than. Doesn't that mean that he couldn't defend a single attack from any of these people? Hum, things aren't as easy as it seems. There's a high-grade summoner amongst them. Since there are two lightning elementalists, it's unknown which of them is the summoner. The older lady amongst the three ladies said with narrowed eyes. Of the three ladies, two had identical looks, only being separated by the colors of their eyes. They even had the same heights. They were obviously twins. The twins looked to be in their early 30s. With long waist-length blonde hairs, they stood at around 5 foot 4 inches with hergless figures. The third lady was a little older with black hair mixed with hints of grey. She was taller than the twins, with a chubby figure, unlike the twins. Of the ten men, three had grey hairs, four with black short hair, two with brown hairs, and the young man who had striking ember shoulder length hair. He looked to be in his later twenties with an athletic figure, standing at a height of 6 foot 3 inches. We'll just kill them both and be done with it. The young man said nonchalantly. To him, Gray and his friends were unimportant people. They might be talented. But since they were part of the enemies, they are regarded as enemies as well. The young man opened his left palm, and a small wind orb the size of a fingernail appeared above it. It quickly started rotating, and before long, it looked like a wheel with spikes at the end of it. Go. He ordered softly as the small spinning wheel left his palm, and headed straight for Gray and his friends. Chapter 248 Hum, Gray looked at the spinning wheel that was coming in their direction. The wheel was only around the size of a human head, having a greenish color. Shit. Klaus. He called when he sensed the power that the wheel contained. Klaus didn't need to ask any questions, since he already understood Gray. Without any delays, he spread out both arms in front of him, creating an ice sphere that he used to trap the spinning wheel. Boom. An explosion rang out from the sphere as multiple small wind blades could be seen trying to burst out from the sphere. But with the hardness of Klaus's ice ability, it was impossible given its current strength. Oh, they're good. The young man with ember hair said indifferently. The twins attacked after Klaus blocked the young man's attack. They were both water elementalists. The one with blue eyes created a water storm that she sent towards Klaus. While the one with green eyes pointed forward and a water screen appeared mid-air. Water arrows came out of the water screen, shooting straight at Grey and his friends non-stop. 
HMPH. Klaus snorted arrogantly when he saw the waterstorm coming towards them. Done. Grey thought to himself as two symbols lit up in the sky. Klaus was currently the one doing most of the defending against the mayor's guests. Grey, Alice, and Reynolds were trying to get rid of the guards. Individually, the guards weren't a problem. But collectively, Grey regarded them as threats. If they could remove the guards from the scene, then escaping would be easier. Presently, after their last massacre, the guards numbered at about 50 now. Void suddenly appeared on Grey's shoulder. No need to worry about reinforcements anymore. Once this wave is whipped out, we are clear to go. Grey nodded and immediately attacked with his inscriptions. When he realized that the mayor's guests were progressively getting stronger than what they initially portrayed, he quickly devised a plan. Although the mayor and his guests were the strongest people among their opponents, they couldn't stop them with their current strength. But the guards though, could. Not because of their strength, but by their sheer numbers. Grey could neglect their attacks given his insane physical abilities, but the others couldn't. This was why he sent Void to make sure no more guards came this way. If they wanted to escape, then the guards had to be removed first. Bam. Bang. Grey wasn't the only one attacking the remaining guards. Reynolds' apostrophe elemental warrior was casually cutting them down. Alice's large-scale attacks were immobilizing them, while even Void who recently came back started killing them as well. Klaus was the one tasked with defending the attacks from the mayor's guests, given his superior defensive ability. His ice wall has currently grown stronger than Grey's earth wall. They're trying to remove the guards so they can escape. One of the elderly men said, Impressive strategy. The second elderly man praised. If he was met with the same soak.yum stances, he would chose to also flee instead of fighting, especially after seeing that the strength of his opponents was increasingly improving. Oh, an inscriber. These youths just keep on giving us reasons to make sure they don't escape, said one of the men with brown hair when he saw the symbols attacking. This water elementalist is different from the others I've seen. His ice ability is far superior to anyone I've ever seen. The chubby lady commented on Klaus's ice ability. 13 second stage origin plane elementalists were simultaneously attacking, and yet, Klaus was single-handedly defending against them. Although they had destroyed his ice walls a couple of times, it was still very impressive, to say the least. Bang. The ice wall crumbled once again which forced Klaus to retreat, but he was stopped by a hand place on his back. Grey, who was standing behind him, looked at the attacks that were raining towards them. After the ice wall was destroyed, he quickly created an earth wall, but supported it with an ice wall. Since he knew his earth wall wouldn't be able to block the attacks. Aren't you guys done yet? Klaus asked. He was the one facing the strongest attacks. So unlike the others, he was feeling pressured. Soon, try to hold them off for another minute. Grey said before turning back to continue attacking the guards. Within a minute since he formed the inscriptions, they had already killed or injured at least 30 people. If they continued at that speed, then they should be done in a minute. The guards aren't even able to put up a fight against them. They couldn't even block a single attack. Damn it. We should have just left after taking the wine. Klaus complained but once again started blocking the attacks of all 13 people. The mayor was currently standing behind his guests. There was nothing he could do in a battle like this. Klaus, who just started defending again, cursed his bad luck when he noticed their attacks were getting stronger. Why are they getting stronger? Why the hell are they getting stronger? He almost wanted to start crying. This wasn't how it was supposed to be. After stealing the coins, they would escape. Now, because they were nosy, they discovered something shocking and were being attacked because of it. Had they just left after obtaining the coins, none of this would have happened. Grey took a peek at Klaus, who was currently scrambling left and right to try to block the attacks from their opponents. You guys deal with this quickly, I'll help him. He turned around and started attacking the people from the Azuro Empire with his inscriptions, while also assisting Klaus to defend against their attacks. Whoosh. A huge wind blade cut through Grey's earth wall, slashing at the group. Shit. They've reached the third stage. Chapter 249. Grey's expression turned serious. The battle was taking an unexpected change, and it wasn't in their favor. With the improvements the mayor's guests are making, the longer the battle is delayed, the higher their chances of losing it. He narrowed his eyes before sending a stream of flames to block the wind blade that was coming towards them. Boom. Both attacks clashed causing an explosion, his flame quickly overpowered the wind blade. After destroying it, 
It continued forward, heading straight for the young man who was a wind elementalist. Seeing Grey's fire stream coming in his direction, the young man squinted his eyes when he sensed the power it possessed. He felt a sense of threat from this attack, unlike the rest. Huh. Multi-elementalist. He mumbled softly as he created a windshield. But it was destroyed. But the fire stream that continued aggressively towards him. Help me. He asked the others for assistance. They didn't delay and quickly offered their help. It took the combined effort of four third stage origin plane elementalists to stop a single attack from Grey. So he's the inscriber. One of the elderly men said. Yes, he's also a multi-elementalist with special flames that are at least two stages more powerful than his stage. Replied another man who was surprised by this. What were the odds of meeting a rare multi-elementalist with special flames? Almost zero. Other than the time Grey used his inscriptions. He hadn't used the fire element. This was why the people from the Azura Empire were shocked, knowing when they found out he was a rare multi-elementalist. Since the battle started, they have seen him use three elements now. Earth, water, and fire. He's more of a threat than the others. The young man said with squinted eyes. The group from the Azura Empire was still relatively calm. To them, it was only a matter of time before they would be able to overpower Grey and his friends. Once they've done that, they would kill them. After Grey sent out that attack, he continued attacking the group from the Azua Empire with his inscriptions. But the remaining nine who didn't help the young man stop his flame, were able to block the attacks. After all, it was only two inscriptions. They also attacked, but most of their attacks were blocked by Klaus's water screen or ice shield. Shit. If only I could make ten or even better twenty simultaneously, they would have been dead or injured by now. Grey thought a little sad inside. When he was in the fusion state, he had no problems with making over 10 inscriptions. But normally, his limit was 3. While he was attacking with those two, he hastily made the third one. His job right now was to stop the group from the Azure Empire from getting closer to them. However, the only thing his attacks were doing was slightly delaying them. They were steadily getting closer to the group. Now he knew why Klaus was so pressured previously. Guys, he called out to Alice and the others. All done, let's go. Alice reported. Few you guys leave, I'll delay them. Grey said. Seriously. You must be crazy to think we'd leave you again. Alice looked at him as if saying they weren't going anywhere. You do know I'm faster than all of you, right? Grey couldn't help but say. Although facing these people alone was dangerous. It would be easier for him to escape if he didn't think of the others. Given his current speed, even if the group from the Azure Empire got to the seventh stage of the Origin Plane, they still wouldn't be able to catch up to him. Yeah, you do have a point there. Klaus nodded thoughtfully. You see, now you guys retreat slowly while I and Void will try to stall them. Since they've just reached the third stage, it'll take a while before they get to the fourth, much like the fifth stage. And even if they do, they still can't stop us. Grey said confidently. He might not be confident if it were any other thing. But after spending almost six months of running in the trial land. He was fully certain that escaping wouldn't be a problem for him. Okay. Alice and Reynolds nodded. Void, why don't we play with them? Grey said while retreating two steps back as an earth spike came out from the ground where he was previously standing. Void nodded before vanishing from view. Now that they didn't need to bother about the guards, it made things easier for them. Bang. Klaus's ice shield was destroyed once again, and multiple earth, lightning, fire, and water elements attacks rained down on the group. Damn it. Why don't you guys fight us four on four? Klaus yelled out to the group from the Azure Empire as he scrambled to block a few of the attacks. He only managed to block three. But even then, he was sent flying after doing that. Alice and Reynolds were lightning elementalists, so instead of defending, they quickly retreated out of the range of the attack, leaving only Grey to face off against them. Boom. Bam. Bang. Some of the attacks missed their targets, striking the ground instead before exploding. Grey managed to set up three defenses before the attacks got to him. An earth wall, an ice wall, and lastly, a fire wall. The group from the Azura Empire approached the location where Grey and his friends were previously standing, even though the explosion hadn't died down. They were forced to retreat because of the sudden attack that came out of nowhere. Looking around, they couldn't find who attacked them. They guessed it was probably the Elemental Warrior, since it was a lightning attack. 
Mayor, where are your guards? The young man asked when he sensed that no more guards were fighting against Gray's group. The mayor who was a couple of meters away from them looked around. It was only now that he realized that there were no guards in the area. He couldn't reply since he didn't know what to say. Why were no more guards coming? Chapter 250 I I I the mayor tried to explain, but he had nothing. He didn't know why his guards weren't rushing here anymore. He had over 200 guards in the villa, and not even close to 100 had shown up. So what the hell happened to the over 100 guards that were in the villa? HMPH, we'll take care of everything ourselves. The young man said before turning to one of his companions and giving him a nod. Boom. Just as he was about to take a step to advance forward, an attack was launched at him once again. And like the first time, it came out of nowhere. Find out who's attacking us, he ordered. The explosion was just about to die down. Alice and Reynolds were already close to the villa fence. Klaus was just trying to stand up after he was sent flying by the attack. Grey was completely covered in blue flames. This confused the group from the Azua Empire more, since the two times they have been attacked were accurate. Could it be that there's someone else helping them that we aren't aware of? This was the thought running through the heads of all the people from the Azura Empire. After sensing that the explosion had died down, Grey removed his fire to look at the group from the Azura Empire. He still had his earth mask on, so the people had no way of seeing his face. Leave, I'll catch up with you all soon, he said to the others. Klaus, who was closer to him, retreated to where Alice and Reynolds were standing. While Grey stood in his previous position, prepared to fight against all the people from the Azura Empire. Are we really going to let him do this? Reynolds asked a little concerned. He did escape from that dragon. This shouldn't question mark be a problem for him, said Klaus. But we're going to beat him up, he added. Because Grey was attacked when he left the trial land, they couldn't beat him up according to their original plan. Who knew Grey would give them another opportunity? We're not beating him up. This is different from the last time. And besides, he's doing it to help us. Alice looked at Klaus as if telling him to behave. But fine, let's go. Klaus destroyed the fence before running into the city. Be careful. Alice advised before dashing out along with Reynolds, leaving Grey and Void alone. The people from the Azura Empire didn't do anything to try to stop them, leaving the mayor dismayed. They are getting the mayor was about to speak of Alice's and the office escape, but a cold look from the young man shut him up. Hey, you're trying to delay us so your friends can get away. How noble of you, the young man said calmly with a small smile. Grey didn't reply and stood in the same position. Void was hiding behind a rock and given his color. And since it was dark, it was almost impossible for the people from the Azura Empire to see him. You're a talented one, so I don't really want to kill you. Join us. The young man said while stretching out an open arm before adding, Aren't you tired of all these wars? Of people dying because we're from different empires. We're all the same people. But we chose to fight against ourselves because we believe some are better than the other. This continent is named the Azura Continent for a reason. We were once united. But because of greed and the stupidity of one man, we were divided. The young man went on to continue preaching about why Grey should join them. So they could unite the continent once again, and stop all the killings and sufferings. He's pretty good with words though. No wonder they managed to convince the mayor into doing their bidding. Grey said to Klaus. If we can stop this. Bang. The young man was about to take a step while still talking. But like before, Void attacked him, forcing him back. Even if the continent is united, it wouldn't stop this war. I might not know much, but I know the greed of people is insatiable. After unification, something else would start up a war. I don't want to be a hero. I just want to live a peaceful life, free from war and killing. Grey said. Well... They should have already gotten close to the city walls by now. Time for me to go, he thought. You do not under. After unification, who would rule? Grey stopped the young man from continuing his speech. He could trick others with his words, but not him. They say they want to unify the continent to stop the war. But the truth was, will the war ever end? Once the continent is unified, another battle would begin, a battle for the leading seat. The people, answered the young man. And you really believe that? Grey looked at the young man weirdly. Even though it's hard, we can try. The young man continued trying to persuade him. If the people are not united on their free will, do you think they would accept this? 
The only way you can keep them is through fear, and I have no plans of doing something like that. Whoever wins this war has nothing to do with me, Gray said before tapping his foot on the ground softly. I'll be leaving now. He turned around and swaggered off. The young man from the Azura Empire as well as his companions tried to go after him, but they were left surprised when they realized they couldn't move. They didn't know when, but they were currently standing on mud. Although this couldn't stop them from chasing him, it would give him the time he needs to leave. Why aren't you chasing after him? The mayor asked almost hysterical. Did you think I said so much for nothing? Chapter 251 Huh? A confused expression appeared on the face of the mayor. No need to explain to you. If news of this gets out, then our months of hard work would be in vain. You didn't think I'll come here alone, did you? The young man smiled lightly before using the wind element to forcefully push the mud around him. He floated a few feet into the air before landing on dry land. The boy is ingenious. I haven't seen or heard of anything like this. One of the men who was an earth elementalist praised Gray before casually making an earth pillar rise from the ground where he was standing, taking him out of the mud. He didn't only take himself out, he also did the same for the other 11 people. Have you notified them? The young man looked at a man who was dressed in blue amongst his companions. The man nodded before raising his hand to show a small plaque-like item. What is that? The mayor looked at the item curiously. Firstly, it was like a plaque, but it gave him a unique sense. This is something we made recently. It can be used to communicate with others within a 5 kilometers radius. The young man stated proudly. Wow, exclaimed the mayor, he was awed by this. This gave him more confidence that working with these people was the best choice. The Killen Empire couldn't come up with something like this. Well, none that he had heard of. Let's go, they should be heading to the city walls. The young man took a step forward before covering his feet with the wind element, and moving at a breakneck speed. The mayor barely caught a glimpse of him. Of the other 12 people, there were two wind elementalists, one lightning elementalist, four water elementalists, two fire elementalists, and three earth elementalists. The lightning elementalist was the one who followed behind before the two wind elementalists. The others were slower, since their elements aren't ones that drastically question mark increases the speed of its user. Outside the villa. After Gray left the villa, he ran towards the east. The city gate was located in the south. He and the group initially planned on staying in an inn before leaving. But since they've been discovered, they need to leave the city as soon as possible. He ran from the mayor's villa to the nearest street. Although it was already almost midnight, Gray noticed the city was still active. People were walking to and fro in the streets, and he could hear shouts from some parts of the city. Moving on the ground might delay me, he thought while rubbing his chin. That's it. He jumped onto the roof of the building close to him and started running on top of it. The distance between each building was around 5 to 10 meters. This was something he could cover in a single jump. He started moving from rooftop to rooftop, heading straight for the city walls. The city walls stood at around 20 meters high. To Gray and his friends, that was a piece of cake. It took him almost 5 minutes to get to the city walls. On reaching the walls, he leaped over it without much problems to find the others waiting for him outside. So quick, Klaus who was currently leaning on his knees was left stunned by Grey's speed. It hadn't even been up to 1 minute that they left the city. Yet Grey who was supposed to delay their opponents was already here. If not for the trust he had for him, he would have asked if he truly delayed them. Go! Grey didn't stop. The people from the Azura Empire might have already reached the fourth stage by now. He didn't know what their true strength was. All he knew was that, it was not something they should want to find out. Alice and Reynolds immediately followed after him. Klaus, who was catching his breath, could only complain inside before chasing after the group. They soon disappeared into the forest around the city. Using the normal pathway wasn't a good idea, since they are trying to escape from their pursuers. Another five minutes passed before the young man from the Azure Empire showed up on the top of the city wall. This was the side Gray and his friends used. He's very fast. The young man said while staring in the direction Gray and his friends took. It was almost like he saw them running in that direction. He had already reached the fifth stage of the origin plane. Yet he still wasn't able to catch up with Gray. This discovery left him dumbfounded. The lightning elementalist was the next to appear on the city wall. Tell them to stop them. The young man turned to the lightning elementalist before jumping down from the city wall. 
The lightning elementalists followed suit. Just after they jumped off the city walls, the two other wind elementalists appeared on the wall. Before going after them, two lights flashed through the night sky, heading in the direction Grey and his friends took. In the forest, Grey didn't stop running for one bit. Times like these were the times he wished he was alone. Alice and Reynolds were fast. But not to his level, Klaus on the other hand was a drag. Grey literally had to carry him on his back after they ran for two minutes. This excited Klaus, since he didn't have to bother with having to run anymore. Faster you two, he said while looking at Alice and Reynolds who were behind them. Reynolds had the urge of beating him up while Alice was already planning how she would beat him up once they escaped their current predicament. Just when Klaus was about to continue mocking the duo for being too slow, he saw two flashes in the sky. His heart immediately sank. Bad news guys, two overlord plane elementalists are coming in our direction. Chapter 252 What? Alice, Grey, and Reynolds exclaimed simultaneously in shock. No need to panic yet. There's also the possibility that this is just a coincidence. And they're heading in the same direction as us. Klaus tried to calm the others down. There's also the chance of them being sent by those guys. All in all, we're either doomed, or this is just like I previously speculated, a coincidence. He added, you're not helping. Grey and the others felt like beating him up. How does he have the courage to say those words in their situation? If they were actually being chased by Overlord Plane Elementalists, then they were toast. Who joke with that? I'm just saying guys. Klaus shrugged. Grey felt like slamming him into the ground. This guy just doesn't know when to shut up. Alice and Reynolds tried increasing their speed, but they were already at their highest speed. If they were truly being chased by Overlord Plane experts, then no matter how much they increase their strengths, they wouldn't be able to escape. Grey looked around trying to access the situation. His only bet right now was using the fusion state. It hadn't been long he used it, but breaking through helped him remove the excess energy in his body. So using it is safe. With his current stage, he should be able to advance to the first stage of the Overlord plane, since he had five elements, which meant a boost of five stages. But he wasn't sure the fusion state would take him into the next plane. Can you sense their stages? He asked Void who was on Alice's shoulder. Hum, one of them is in the second stage of the Overlord plane, while the other is in the fourth. Void replied a few seconds later. Shit. It doesn't matter, I'll have to try. Grey resolved his mind to use the fusion state. He was the man Grey's mother assigned to keep him safe. During the first time he was protecting Grey, he rarely did anything other than the time he helped when he was about to be assassinated. However, since Grey entered the trial land, his life had not been the same. First, he was unable to enter the trial land, which made him almost go crazy from fear. He was confident that if anything happened to Grey, Grey's father might be lenient with him, but his mother would definitely kill him without a doubt. When he saw Grey coming out of the trial land, it was the happiest moment of his life. He almost wanted to hug Grey at that time. Now, people had been trying to kill him, and it hadn't even completed four days that he left the trial land. HMPH, these people don't know who his mother is, or else, they would rather die than chase after him. The man thought inside. The two Overlord plane experts who were already close to Grey and his friends, suddenly stopped mid-air when they saw someone appearing all of a sudden. Of the two experts, one of them had a robust body with an average height, while the other who was taller, had a smaller build. They both looked to be in their early 50s, with hairs that were already starting to grey. Who might this venerable one be? The robust one of the two men asked respectfully. He was in the fourth stage of the Overlord plane, yet he was unable to sense the man who appeared before them. He just appeared out of nowhere. Hum, you're respectful, unlike the others I've encountered, the middle-aged man said while gently shaking his head. All the people he encountered previously asked the same question, who are you? And they all acted arrogantly, these two though were exceptions. You're a senior, of course, we should be respectful, the robust man said with a bow. He had already noticed this man wasn't from the Killen Empire. So talking to him politely was the best choice. He still didn't understand what the man meant when he said they were respectful. What are you doing here? The middle-aged man asked. The robust man hesitated for a while before replying. We're taking care of a small problem. Oh, you mean the boy? The middle-aged man pointed at Grey and his friends who were getting further away. How did? Sire, this is your greatest mistake. 
Had you been going after something else, I wouldn't even be bothered with you. The middle-aged man interrupted with both hands clasped behind him. Senior, you. Unfortunately, this is the end of the road for you too. Anyone who has the thought of harming the young lord is not allowed to be left alive. It's nothing personal. I'm just trying to stay alive as well. The middle-aged man shrugged. The two men were fear-stricken when they heard the middle-aged man addressing Grey as young lord. Senior, we didn't. Come, take me to your master. No need to try. That cheap trick of yours with that small thing can't deceive me. The middle-aged man interrupted the man once again. He noticed they were trying to communicate with the young man with the small plaque-like device. Given his strength, blocking them from transmitting anything to the young man was not a problem. The middle-aged man snapped his finger, and they all disappeared. In the forest. Ha! Huh. They're gone. Reynolds said when he noticed that the lights not only stopped following them, but disappeared. Gray asked Void to clarify if the Overlord plane experts were gone. After getting confirmation, he nodded to the others. You see, I told you there's also the probability that this was just a coincidence, said Klaus who was still on Grey's back. Let's keep going, just to be safe. I'm sure those guys are still chasing after us, Grey said not stopping. Klaus who was on Grey's back was the most carefree among the group. Chapter 253. The group continued running for another 15 minutes. It was only after Grey was sure they were no longer being chased did he stop. Of course, Void was the one who gave him confirmation. As soon as he stopped, the first thing he did was to throw Klaus off of his back. Klaus, who wasn't expecting Grey to toss him off his back, landed B-U-T-T first on the ground and yelped in pain. Damn you. Couldn't you just drop me like a normal person would? He glared at Grey. If not for the fact that he couldn't beat him, he wouldn't mind teaching him a lesson. I could, but doing this is more fun. Grey chuckled as he took a seat on the ground under a tree. They were still in the forest, and since they aren't being chased anymore, Grey suggested they rested here. He was a little skeptical about why the group from the Azure Empire stopped chasing after them. Naturally, given how important the information they found out was, he didn't think they would let them go. When Void told him they were no longer being chased, and that the group from the Azure Empire disappeared, just like the Overlord plane experts, it left him deep in thought. However, no matter how hard he thought about it, he couldn't figure out why they stopped chasing them. We're lucky they stopped chasing us though since we're safe, that's all that matters, he thought. After all, it wasn't like he wanted them to keep on chasing them. Alice and Reynolds saw how Grey threw Klaus on the floor and couldn't help but laugh at his misfortune. He had been telling them about how slow they were completely forgetting that he was being carried by Grey. They didn't think he forgot though, he was just a shameless individual. So now what? Asked Alice as she took a seat close to Grey and Klaus, who was still rubbing his B-U-T-T -T with both hands. We head back to the academy. Although I have no interest in this war, we should report it to the principal. Gray said after a moment of silence. Okay. Alice nodded. With nothing left to say, she entered a meditative state since she had been using her lightning essence throughout the chase. Reynolds also followed suit, leaving Gray and Klaus awake. Hey, bud. Klaus moved closer to Gray, moving in a very odd way. He's still in a sitting position, so he dragged himself along the ground before getting close to Gray. Gray shook his head when he saw Klaus doing this. Huh, why don't we take some wine and reminisce about the trial land, suggested Klaus. He didn't need to recover his elemental essence, since he didn't use any. He wasn't feeling sleepy as well, so why not have a good time with his friend? Sure, but we're not drinking that wine. Gray agreed to them drinking, but they were not to drink the special wine. Klaus agreed since he wasn't really too bothered about which wine they drank, as long as it was not terrible, he was fine with it. Grey brought out one of the wines he took from Smith's room. He also had silver cups in his storage ring. The duo stayed up all through the night drinking and chatting, while Void was the one who was mostly on the lookout, given the massive range his senses can cover. They spoke about their times in the trial land. Grey told him about the times when he was chased by a horde of lightning apes. He almost accidentally also spoke of the bunnies when he was speaking of the times he had to run away. But luckily, he stopped himself on time. If Klaus hears about that, his life would be hell, since Klaus would definitely mock him with it. As soon as the sun rose, the group continued their journey once again. They left the forest and used the normal pathway. 
Klaus was against them walking and suggested they bought a horse once they got to the next city, but the others thought it would be fun if they walked to the Lunar Academy. This would provide them more time to talk about their experiences in the trial land. They passed through multiple small towns before they got to the next city. Klaus refused to leave the city if they didn't get horses. Gray and Reynolds tried convincing him, but he refused. It was only after Alice stepped in did he agree to it. But it was only after she said they would get a horse, once they got to the next city after this one. It took them three days to get to the next city, and it was surprisingly the same city Gray and Chris stopped in, when he was being carried to Lunar Academy after his test. This brought a lot of memories back to him. He couldn't help but laugh when he recalled how Chris was eating when they stopped at the restaurant. He took the group to that same restaurant telling them how he and Chris stopped here. The food was good which brightened Klaus's day. Gray had refused to cook since they started the journey even after being bugged by Klaus and Reynolds. They stayed at an inn and on the next day, they followed Klaus's wish and got a horse. According to their current pace, it would still take them about four days or so before they get to the academy. If they were walking, it would take about a week at least before they got there. Gray took his time to take in all the sceneries as they headed to the academy. They passed through different terrains, mountains, swamps, valleys, canyons, and so on. There was a time when they had to cross a river. Gray and the others wanted them to take a boat that was carrying people to the other side. But Klaus had other ideas. Chapter 254 On a river, a ship could be seen transporting people from one side of the river bank to the other. The river was around 7 kilometers wide. The ship was around 100 meters long and extended around 20 meters wide. The ship had three floors with each floor having around 40 cabins. On the deck of the ship, some people could be seen resting while enjoying the midday sun. Look, a young girl that looked to be around 14 suddenly yelled and pointed behind the ship. Her surprise scream caught everyone's attention, and they all rushed to the deck to see what the young girl was pointing at. Seeing the sight before them, most of their mouths were left agape from surprise. Klaus could be seen sitting proudly on his horse, with his hair dancing in the wind, as his horse ran on top of the ice bridge in front of him. His right hand was outstretched, and snow could be seen coming from it, creating the ice bridge as they went on. His handsome visage caught the attention of most of the young ladies in the ship, making a few blush. The young ladies weren't the only ones who his face caught their attention. The young men on the ship who were planning to speak to the young ladies had sour faces, since Klaus had ruined their chances, seeing how most of the ladies were reacting. When Klaus noticed how they were looking at him, he made the ice bridge go closer to the ship, while also taking it higher, so he could be at the same height as the deck of the ship. Gray, Reynolds, and Alice who were behind him looked at each other lost for words. When Klaus told them of the idea, he said he didn't want them to waste their hard-earned money. Now, they already knew he only wanted to show off. No wonder he waited till the ship set off before he said we should go as well. Gray said in enlightenment, Yeah, but this is not the most shameless thing he has done, so I'm not surprised. Reynolds nodded. They've already gotten used to Claw's shamelessness, so whenever he does things like this, they are never really surprised. Alice looked behind them to watch as the ice bridge was steadily thawing out. When she asked him why he didn't make it last longer, he said this would make it more dramatic. Klaus was almost 10 meters ahead of the trio. The reason for this was simple. He didn't want to be close to Grey. Wow, so handsome. And he's powerful too. He must be from the greatest academy. Yeah, just look at his dazzling hair. Some young ladies exclaimed in awe from Klaus's appearance. It wasn't hard for them to figure out he was around their age. Klaus smiled softly when he heard all this, but he didn't look at them. His smile got even wider when he heard a lady saying she wouldn't mind being his servant girl. Most of the young people here were around the fusion and the early stages of the arcane plane. None could use their elements as well as he does. Just as he was having a great time, what he expected happened. Wow, the one behind him is even more handsome. He's beautiful. Louder exclamations rang out when Gray's horse got close to the ship. Klaus almost felt like kicking their young ladies. They didn't even praise him close to five seconds before they all turned their attentions to Gray. It couldn't be helped, Gray was just too handsome. Gray was the only guy his age he had seen that had superior looks to him. Alice who was with them looked at the girls who were screaming loudly. 
She didn't know why they were acting this way. When she first saw Grey, she couldn't deny it, his face left her dumbstruck for a few seconds. But she didn't have the kind of reaction these girls question mark currently had. Unlike Klaus, Grey felt a little embarrassed being stared at in such a way. It made him a little uncomfortable. He knew he was handsome. But isn't their reaction a little over the top? Klaus, who wasn't being stared at by the young ladies anymore, quickly lowered the ice bridge, before giving the ship some distance. The people on the ship watched as the moving ice bridge disappeared from sight. Well, at least I got to enjoy the feeling, even though it was only for a few seconds, it was worth it. Klaus thought, trying to encourage himself. You're a nutjob, Reynolds said. Ha ha. If only you're as handsome as we are, then you'll know why. Klaus laughed before throwing a glance at Grey. How did you end up like this? Grey shook his head as he asked. The only reason Klaus made the ice bridge was that he wanted to show off. It's a gift. Now tell me, how did you feel a few seconds ago? Klaus asked. Uncomfortable. Grey said with an odd expression. This is going to be hard, with this mindset, he will never get a girlfriend. Which boy feels uncomfortable when being stared at by so many girls? Thought Klaus. Klaus was almost 100% sure that if Grey had his skills, then he would get more girls. Grey's answer made him take the decision of wanting to make sure Grey had a girlfriend soon. Do you hate girls? Asked Klaus. No, why would I? Grey replied. Do you, you know, like boys? Klaus brought his horse closer to Grey and whispered to him. Of course not. Where's this going? Grey almost pushed Klaus into the river. Klaus looked at Grey, as if sizing him up while occasionally nodding his head. His stare frightened Grey because Grey knew whenever he's acting this way, it's that he's planning to do something crazy. What are you planning to do now? Questioned Grey. Oh, nothing. Klaus shrugged. His reply scared Grey even more. Chapter 255 After getting to the other side of the river, they continued their journey to the academy. The group would occasionally stop at different cities and towns, so the horses could rest. One week later, Grey, Alice, Klaus, and Reynolds could be seen riding towards the huge compound of the Lunar Academy. It surprisingly took them a week to get here even though according to Grey's calculations, they were supposed to reach here three days ago. If only you agreed to us taking the route Reynolds suggested, we would have been here sooner. Grey said turning around to face Klaus. I knew that route was longer. That was why I picked it in the first place. Klaus said not admitting he was wrong. Bullshit. The only reason we took the route was that you said we should take it since it was shorter. Reynolds said imitating Klaus when saying the last part of his statement. Your route was boring. Mine was great. Klaus didn't back down. How is being almost robbed great? Asked Reynolds. By people who just broke through to the origin plane. Didn't you enjoy whooping their asses? Cause I sure did. Also, when we saved that small village from being destroyed by a horde of magical beasts, didn't you feel like a hero? Klaus said putting a heroic posture as they rode closer to the academy. I get the part where we were almost robbed. But since when did killing the last beast make you the hero of the village? Grey looked at Klaus with raised eyebrows. When they defeated the bandits who tried to rob them, they took them to the city close to where the bandits' hideout was located. After they dropped the bandits off to the guards there, they continued their journey only to see multiple dead bodies of people and magical beasts on a path. They followed the trail and saw that a village was being attacked by a horde of beasts. But the villagers were already close to victory with only a few beasts still alive. Before they got to the village, there was only one beast left alive, and the warriors of the village had no problem in killing it, since it wasn't the strongest beast anyway. But before anyone could attack it, Klaus created a huge ice shard that he used to stab it. The villagers naturally were grateful, although Klaus killed only a single beast. It showed he was trying to be helpful, since the villagers noticed that they only just arrived. Grey my friend, let me tell you something you still don't know. It's not about the journey. It's about the beginning and the ending. Klaus said putting on the air of an otherworldly wise old man. What do you mean not about the journey? What if you die on the journey? Grey felt like using a boulder to smack Klaus's head. Maybe he would start thinking properly then. If you die in the journey, then technically, that's the end of your journey. Everything has an end. That why you should make the most out of your life, like me. Klaus said thoughtfully. 
Where do you hear all this? Gray couldn't help but ask. From a wise old man, Klaus said respectfully. You mean the crazy old drunk who sits by the side of the road close to the Gowan Tavern in the city? Gray easily guessed the identity of the wise old man Klaus was speaking about. In Luna City, Klaus loved going to two places whenever he wants to drink and have fun. One was the Coney Tavern, and the other which Gray personally prefers going was the Garland Tavern. You see, it's all about perspective when we view things. From your perspective, he's a crazy old drunk, but from my perspective, he's a wise old man. It's amazing how two people see the same thing in different ways. Klaus didn't try to deny that the wise old man was the same person Gray was talking about. Where did you hear this as well? No, wait, don't answer that. It's also from the wise old man. Gray asked but answered the question himself, since he knew Klaus was going to give him the same answer. You should take some life lessons from him. Two silver coins could make you a whole lot wiser. Ray, I don't think he can help your case though. I brought your issue up to him some time back, and he was flabbergasted by how your head works. Klaus said to Gray, before patting Reynolds' shoulder sympathetically. I underweight? What? Reynolds almost jumped out of his horse to attack Klaus. Other than being stronger than Klaus, Klaus defeats him in every other aspect, especially when it came to cursing. Sometimes he wonders how great Klaus would be, if he actually decides to spend the time he uses in annoying someone in thinking of something good. Klaus's quick wittedness when it came to annoying a person was insane. It makes him wonder about the purpose of life sometimes. Nothing. Klaus refused to speak on the issue any further. Gray looked at the duo and smiled softly. Klaus seems to always think of ways to annoy Reynolds. Does this mean you're going to end up like a wise old man as well? Gray asked with a smirk. Yes. Klaus nodded. But his expression soon changed when Alice and Reynolds started chuckling. Wait, no, no. We don't know what the world has in store for us. But you said to make the most out of your life, the wise old man sure is doing it. He does what he loves doing, that is drinking. You on the other hand are not far from that. Gray continued with a smile. He had finally gotten a chance to win Klaus in a war of words. This was a once in a lifetime opportunity. How could he dare waste it? Well played Gray, well played. Klaus said with squinted eyes while nodding. Gray and the others burst into laughter when they realized Klaus admitted defeat. Reynolds should be happy. Gray just took the baton from him without him asking. Klaus thought. The baton in this case was who he would naturally annoy. Chapter 256. Finally. I've missed this place. Gray took in a deep breath when they got to the gate of the academy. It had been six months since they left, and now they've returned stronger than before. The academy's gate wasn't as deserted as it has always been, which was came as a surprise to the group. They would rarely see people at the academy gates whenever they came back from a mission, but there were surprisingly almost 10 people who were walking into the academy at the time they got here. The group didn't bother about it. After all, it wasn't like there weren't people in the academy. Of the group, Alice could be said to be the one who didn't have a major power-up, other than increasing her plane and elemental grade, with the Great Earth Essence Liquid, she got nothing else. Klaus was able to learn a move that increased his ice ability to a terrifying stage, and it was still on the increase. Reynolds became a high-grade summoner, while Grey awakened two more elements, got a spatial ring, formed a bond with an amazing cat who introduced the space element to him. The flame of the fire element that he recently awakened was blue, while also having a never before heard of cyan elemental grade. All these are added to the fact that he still got a multi-elemental weapon. If anyone were to get just one of these things, they would feel extremely lucky. I didn't miss it much, the trial land was more fun. Klaus said while highlighting his horse. It's safer here, but you're right, that place was fun. Grey followed suit. Alice and Reynolds came down as well. Void had been with Alice almost all through the journey. Just as they were about to go in, Reynolds asked a question that Gray wanted to ask the last time he came back with a horse. What happens to the horses? Huh? Klaus looked at him with a confused expression. You know, the horses. I've never seen any horses in the academy. And I never get to see the ones I leave outside whenever I come back out. Reynolds pointed at the horses that were tied on the side of the academy gate. Hum, I don't know. I'll ask my dad once I see him, Klaus said. When Gray heard Klaus speaking about his father, he suddenly recalled his teacher. 
You guys head in first, I'll go see someone. He turned around and started walking out of the academy compound once again. When Void saw this, he quickly vanished and appeared on Gray's shoulder, leaving two young boys who were about to walk out of the academy dumbstruck. Come back soon, we'll wait for you at my place. You know we have to report to the principal about what we heard, Klaus said. I won't take long. Gray nodded before heading to the back of the academy. He passed a group of youngsters that were around 12 to 13 years of age. He couldn't help but reminisce about the first time he went for the test. It was a depressing moment in his life. Looks like they've just been admitted. He thought to himself. When he got to the back of the academy, he soon got to the area he does his daily physical training. He smiled softly before advancing on his journey. After he got to the place where he tried fusing the elements for the first time, he couldn't help himself but burst out into laughter. The trees around had already started growing once again, and all signs of the destruction he caused here were gone. Void who was on his shoulder, couldn't help but look at him in a strange manner. He didn't understand why Grace suddenly started laughing. Why are you laughing? Void couldn't help but ask. Oh, it's nothing much. I just recalled something that happened here some time ago. Gray went on to tell him about how he almost lost his life to his experiment. He didn't tell Void he got the power or the technique from the Chaos God, so telling him about it wasn't a problem. Haha, <laughs> to think you actually almost killed yourself. Void laughed when he heard how Gray ran for his life when he lost control of the orb. Yeah, funny. Gray said while staring at his open palm. He slowly clenched it with a smile. That technique turned out to be very important during his time in the trial land. If not for it, he wouldn't have been able to defeat the last golem in a short time. It has also been greatly beneficial to some of his battles. He walked past the place, before getting to the rock that led to the valley where Chris stayed. It has been so long he met his teacher, he couldn't help but wonder how he was doing. Thinking of Chris made him chuckle once again. I think the first thing he'll tell me to do once he sees me, is to cook him a meal. The thought made him laugh out again, before making weird hand seals and hitting multiple places on the rock. Even though he didn't sense anyone following him, he has already gotten used to making hand seals before opening the rock. Oh, a secret passage. Void exclaimed softly. Yeah, my teacher stays here. Gray said as he walked into the tunnel. Your teacher. He's separate from the ones at the academy, asked Void. Yeah, I don't think he teaches anyone else in the academy. Also, behave yourself, he has a fiery temper. He might probably want to cook you if you make him mad. Gray warned as they got closer to the end of the tunnel. HMPH, if he can catch me, Void snorted. I might not think anyone else can catch you, but my teacher doesn't count as anyone. I don't really know much about him. But I heard even the Emperor of the Empire doesn't want to offend him. Gray stated proudly. Wow, he must be a big shot. Void was amazed by Gray's teacher. Of course. Do you think someone mediocre could teach me? Gray asked smugly. Void didn't reply and waited patiently to see who Gray's teacher was. Chapter 257. Gray walked out of the tunnel and into the valley hoping to be welcomed by Brown. Huh, he's not here. Gray looked around when he didn't feel nor see Brown jumping on him. After looking around, he quickly discerned that they weren't around. He thought of the possibility of Chris being sent to become a representative, but he threw that thought away when he recalled seeing youngsters while he was coming here. Hum, looks like he went out. Gray mumbled as he walked towards Chris's house. There's no one here, Void said after sweeping the area with his spiritual sense. Yeah, looks like teacher went out, said Gray as he stood in front of the door. He looked to the side and noticed the small barn where Chris used to train rabbits and chickens were empty. He must have been gone for a long time now. Gray speculated. Your teacher lives here, asked Void. Gray nodded, before turning to look at the lake in front of Chris's house. He gently C-A-R-E-S said the chair Chris used to seat on. Like in this small wooden house. Void asked scrutinizing Chris's house. No. Gray replied with a blank look. Oh, thank. Of course, he lives here. What's so bad about it? Gray glared at him. Nothing, it's great, very peaceful. Replied Void. How can a big shot live in such a place? There are no shiny things here. Void thought internally. But of course, he kept his thoughts to himself. Over the time they had spent coming to the academy, 
He had seen how lavishly people who regard themselves as big shots live in those cities and towns, even a small village's big shot, possessed some shiny things. Yet, Gray's teacher who according to him the emperor was wary of didn't have any. How preposterous. Shiny things are a symbol of power. Yet such a powerful man doesn't have any. Such a shame. Void shook his head while saying to himself. Sigh let's go, instructor Blake would know where he went to. Gray sighed before heading back to the tunnel. He took another look at the valley before stepping into the tunnel. After leaving the valley, he headed straight for Klaus's building, and was surprised to see the two boys cleaning Klaus' house. Haha, <laughs> good thing you're here. Join us. Klaus invited Gray the moment he saw him. Where's Alice? Gray asked when he didn't see Alice around. Seeing how dusty my house was, she decided to go clean hers. Klaus said, then why is he here? Gray pointed at the hardworking Reynolds. Oh, I promise to help him when he's cleaning his house as well, said Klaus with a mysterious smile. Gray looked at him, then at Klaus, before shaking his head. Klaus was probably trying to take advantage of Reynolds. This would most definitely not end well for him. All Reynolds needs to do is summon his elemental warrior, and Klaus is toast. Why are you looking at me that way? Klaus asked disapprovingly when he noticed the look Gray was giving him. Nothing. Gray didn't bother to advise him. Sometimes, it was best to just let some people suffer for their stupidity. You think I'm not going to help him? Klaus asked with a long face. Your smile said so. Gray didn't deny it. Of course I'll help him. It's a deal after all. Klaus said thumping his C-H-E-S-T. Although I don't believe you. I'm not going to speak about it. But why are you the one outside and he's inside? Gray asked thoughtfully so that I can receive the guests. Klaus responded, making Grey roll his eyes. It wasn't hard to see that Klaus was only trying to avoid doing most of the work. Yeah, good luck with that. I'm going to go clean my house now. It must be in a terrible state by now. Grey said before heading straight for his building, not minding how Klaus and Reynolds were going to settle their upcoming dispute. Okay, we'll head over once we're done with Ray's house. Klaus waved at him before getting back to work. This time, he went inside. I still think Ray is going to beat him up. Gray said to Void. Fat chance, Klaus will think of a way around it. Also, I think he's going to try to get revenge for the time he carried Reynolds, and Reynolds refused to carry him. Void speculated. Revenge? That's very likely. Hey, Ray is still going to beat him up. Gray stood by his first statement. Getting to his house... It was just like he left it only dusty. The chairs not only had dust, but cobwebs as well. Without wasting any more time, he quickly got to work. The wind and the water element were quite useful, since they made the work easier for him. He used the wind element to blow out all the dust in the parlor, before using the water element to wipe every part of it clean. It didn't even take him up to 10 minutes to completely clean his house. After all, all he had was a parlor and a single room. Given the huge space each compound had, it wouldn't be easy for anyone to build a villa or a mansion in their compound. Even after building it, there would still be some space left. Of the group, although Gray was the last to come back, he was the first to get his house to its previous clean state. He noticed that the building on his left was currently occupied. With nothing left to do, he sat outside his house on a small lawn and waited for his friends to come over so they could all report to the principal's office. Klaus and Alice were popular amongst the students, so a few had already started spreading the rumor of their return. Gray was also very popular because of his face, but since he's not as social as Klaus, there were very few people he spoke with other than his three friends. Chapter 258 You guys are early, Gray said when he saw Klaus and Reynolds walking into the compound. He was a little taken aback when he realized Klaus was actually looking okay. He initially expected Reynolds would rough him up when he refuses to help him clean his house. Why wouldn't we? Reynolds asked before taking a seat close to Gray. Gray threw a glance at Klaus, and Reynolds immediately understood why before bursting out into laughter. Of course I'd help him, we're friends after all. Klaus said in discontent before glaring at Reynolds, which increased Reynolds's fit of laughter. Seeing this, Gray knew something definitely happened. He gave Reynolds a questioning stare. Actually, when we got to my house, he said he wasn't going to help me, and I summoned my elemental warrior. Reynolds chuckled while saying, I told you, it was a joke, Klaus explained. 
And my elemental warrior only appeared so he could laugh at the joke, Reynolds said, making Grey laugh alongside him. Did you, you know, beat him a little? Grey whispered to Reynolds. Nah, he immediately started helping when he saw the appearance of the elemental warrior. Reynolds said with a little remorseful, he would have loved to teach Klaus a lesson or two. After all, this was the only advantage he had over him. HMPH, don't get ahead of yourself. Do you think I can't beat that little summon of yours? Klaus snorted coldly. No, no, you can't. Grey was the one who answered with a sneer. I don't like outside interferences when fighting. If he knows he a man, then he should face me one on one without any summons. Klaus glared at the duo. He knew there was no way for him to beat them in a fight. Well, if Reynolds doesn't use his elemental warrior, then he had at least a 60% chance. But since he knew that was impossible, and he couldn't beat them in a fight, he would defeat them with words. Let's head over to Alice's place. You know we still need to report to the principal, suggested Grey after they were done laughing at Klaus. Why don't we go to the city instead? Klaus looked at the two, making Grey facipum. This is an information that will save thousands of lives. We've already wasted so much time cleaning our houses. Now you want to have fun instead. Grey almost felt like knocking some sense into Klaus. I'm joking. Why are you all so serious? Take life as it comes, you'll live better, although not always long, but better. Klaus advised. Another one of the wise old man's teachers. Grey asked with furrowed brows. Yeah, don't always get too worked up or serious. I know sometimes it's good to be serious, but not always. Always being too focused question mark on the goal will make you lose touch with the things around you. Klaus continued his advice. From the man as well, Reynolds asked. No, this is from me. Klaus shook his head, feeling proud that he managed to come up with something like this. I should write it down. I'll write a book about all my teachings about life and spread it across the entire empire. No, the continent. He thought in excitement. They left Grey's house and headed for Alice's place, with Klaus deep in thought. He would occasionally nod his head while rubbing his chin. His strange behavior confused Grey and Reynolds who were walking behind him. Getting to Alice's place, they saw her coming out of her house. She looked fresh and clean, and even put on new clothes which reminded the boys that they didn't even bother to bath after cleaning their houses. They have been wearing the same clothes for weeks now. Alice was slightly taller than the time they left for the trial land, which made the clothing she wore a little short, but it wasn't too noticeable. She wore a long scarlet red dress that extended to her knees and light blue trousers, which were just above her ankle. Her brown hair was tied into a ponytail, bringing out her youthful face. Why are you all still wearing the same clothes? She asked seeing the trio. Grey laughed awkwardly before replying. We wanted to make sure we got to the principal's office without wasting any more time. Alice looked at them, seeing their expressions. She knew they didn't even think of wearing new clothes. She was more surprised about Grey, since he usually baths a lot before they went to the trail land. Hey, pigs. She sneered before skipping in front of the trio, leading them to the principal's office. Grey didn't reply and followed behind her. Klaus gave Reynolds a look before joining Alice and Grey. Reynolds was left surprised by the look Klaus gave to him. It was almost like he was saying, this was your fault. On their way to the academy, they encountered a few instructors who followed them to the capital. Seeing the improvements made by the students exhilarated them. Gray's improvement was particularly extraordinary. He was already at a stage where he could even decide to be an instructor in the academy. To become an instructor in the Lunar Academy needed to be at least in the fourth stage of the Origin Plane. The requirements were a little lower in the other academies, as long as you have broken through to the Origin Plane you're eligible to become one. On getting to the principal's office, Klaus stepped forward. Although they had a piece of important information, if not for the fact that the principal was his father, there was no way they would have come here. They would have at most gone to meet an instructor, someone like Blake, then he would then bring them here. Klaus softly knocked on the door. After waiting for a few seconds and not getting a reply, he knocked on it again. Come in, son. Oliver's voice came from inside the office, you three as well. The group wasn't surprised by the fact that the principal knew Klaus was the one knocking. They would have been surprised if he didn't. Chapter 259. Hum, this is a very important information for the Empire. 
Oliver said with both fingers interlocked, supporting his chin. After the group entered, before he could ask how their experience in the trial land was, they told him about what they found out in Zivia City. It was something he couldn't neglect. I can see you all made great improvements. Oliver nodded with a smile while examining the youths. Klaus was already sitting opposite Oliver, while the others were still standing. They couldn't take a seat without being invited. Unlike Klaus, he asked a little about what they faced in the trial land, which the group answered accordingly. Of course, they didn't tell him everything since it wasn't necessary. You can leave now, except for you two, he said pointing at Klaus and Gray. Also, call Blake over. He added before Alice and Reynolds left the office. Okay, so, the duo bowed before leaving the office. Gray was a little confused because since he got admitted into the school, he had never had any interactions with the principal. The only time he saw him was when Chris took him to the capital. Take a seat. Oliver showed Gray the second seat that was in front of the desk. I know you must have gone to check on your teacher. Oliver asked with a small smile. Yes, sir. But he's not there. Gray replied a little surprised that Oliver guessed he went to see Chris first. Wait, you have a teacher? Klaus asked before Oliver could continue speaking. He didn't mean to interrupt their conversation. It was just that he was dumbfounded by the discovery. Yeah, I thought I told you about it. Gray asked with a confused expression. No, no, you did not. Klaus shook his head while still wearing a shocked expression. Crap. It must have slipped my mind. But yeah, I do. How else do you think I learned inscribing? Gray asked with a thoughtful expression. After accepting Chris as his teacher, he didn't tell them about it. And since he usually trains outside, his friends didn't ask. When they left for the trial land, he had completely forgotten about not telling them that he had a teacher. Oh, so who is it? Klaus asked curiously. Oliver, who was sitting in his seat, looked at the two youngsters with a smile. He couldn't help but recall his friendship with Chris. When he was younger, although he wasn't as playful as Klaus, compared to the always serious looking Chris, he was better. As they grew older, he started changing to the serious one, while Chris turned to the one who doesn't bother about anything, and lives a carefree life. Sometimes, he wonders if his decision to become the principal of the academy was the right choice. He coughed lightly to draw the duo's attention back to him, your teacher has been gone for quite a while now. No one knows where he went to, or when he'll return. I asked you to stay to see if you might know where he might have gone to. He felt since Chris took Gray as his disciple, he must have a special place in his life, so maybe he might have told him about a secret place he usually goes to. No, I don't. Gray shook his head without thinking about it. There was no need to, other than teaching him. Chris rarely speaks about other things. Well, except for food. Oh, okay. You can leave now. I'll call you if I need you. Oliver replied before switching his attention to Klaus. Goodbye, sir. I'll be waiting outside. Gray stood up from his seat and bowed to Oliver before saying to Klaus. I don't think you'll need to wait. Oliver said gently. All right. Gray responded before leaving the office and heading straight for his house. He needed to take a bath. Dad, is anything wrong? Klaus asked when he saw Oliver's serious expression after Gray left. Oliver is usually almost always serious, but not when they were alone together. On getting home, Gray found Void sleeping casually on the bed. He didn't bother about him and went straight to the bathroom. Since he had the fire and water elements now, he didn't need to get water or boil it before bathing. All he needs to do is make water appear on the bathtub, then place a finger into it. Heating it to the temperature he feels will be comfortable for him. That day turned out to be uneventful. Since he didn't see Klaus for the rest of the day, Alice and Reynolds seemed to have plans. Hence he was unable to see them as well. With nothing left to do, he decided to rest for the rest of the day. The next day, Gray woke early the next morning and headed straight to the forest at the back of the academy, accompanied by Void. It had been a long time since he trained his physical body. Void watched Gray running around a certain area, doing pull-ups, push-ups, squats, and so on. You do this daily just to have a strong body. He couldn't help but ask. Yeah, this is why compared to other elementalists in the same stage, I have a far greater speed. Gray replied. He was grateful that when communicating with Void, he didn't always need to speak out. In his current worn-out state, he was already struggling to catch his breath. There was no way for him to speak properly in that state. 
That's quite a lot. We don't need all this to have our superior bodies. Void said proudly. Have you seen yourself? Gray asked sarcastically. He found Void classifying himself as part of magical beasts with superior bodies funny. Of course. Do you think you humans can compare with us when it comes to better physiques? Void asked mockingly. A dragon, no. But you, hey. Gray smirked. He didn't complete his statement. But his reaction said it all. Void was annoyed by Gray belittling him. But Gray didn't bother to argue with him. He had other things on his mind. Since teacher is gone and given my plane, there's little I can learn from the academy. What do I do now? He asked himself. Chapter 260. Hum, I have multiple elemental techniques. They should be able to help me with my other elements. Then there are the items I obtained in the trial land. Gray thought to himself. He was currently stuck between selling them or doing something else with them. I recall the academy having a forgery class or something. An idea struck him. Since he wouldn't be going to elemental classes anymore, he would go for one that creates things. After joining the academy, his main focus was getting stronger. Therefore, he didn't take his time to fully explore the academy. All he did was to go to elemental classes. Once he's done, he would go for his personal training. The only time he heard about the academy having a forgery class was when he overheard it at the library. He still wasn't too sure. The truth was each academy has blacksmiths and physicians. They are the ones who create the weapons as well as the tonics that the students had access to. There are even array classes. But Gray never looked around. It was just as Klaus said. He was too focused on his goal that he lost sight of the things around him. Alice should be aware of it. He immediately came to a decision and went back home. There were a ton of materials in his storage ring. He planned to try out forgery. If he could become a blacksmith, then maybe he could create weapons for himself. There's even the chance of creating something like the multi-elemental sword. The sword says the reason he thought of this. Its essence consumption was too high that even in his current state, he couldn't use it to unleash more than four moves. One has to recall that his elemental essence was more than double of what any other elementalist his stage has. The high consumption led him to thinking maybe there was a problem with the sword. If he could learn forgery, then he might be to figure out how to reduce it. On getting home, he quickly took a bath, changed into better clothes before heading straight for Alice's place. Getting there, he asked if there truly were forgery classes in the academy, leaving Alice dumbfounded. You've been in the academy for over two years, and you're saying you didn't know there were forge classes. Alice couldn't help but ask again. Gray scratched his head before nodding awkwardly, since he knew it was quite weird for someone to be in a place for over two years. Yet know only three or four places. He had never been to the water hall, nor the fire hall, and because he didn't have the elements at then, he felt he didn't need to. Didn't you take arrays classes? Alice asked still shocked. The forgery class was right next to the arrays class. There was no way he would be that oblivious and miss it. Wait, there are arrays classes. Gray asked with a shocked expression. Of course there are arrays classes, unless you learned arrays from somewhere else. Alice said while giving Gray a suspicious look. I have a teacher. Gray said but made sure to take two steps back. Oh, in the academy? Alice asked. I don't really know if he's part of the academy, but you should know him. Gray went on to tell her about Chris which stunned Alice even more. She was from a big family and was fully aware of how highly regarded Chris was. Chris could be said to be the reason the Lunar Academy was at its current height. He might not be an instructor, but his presence was more than enough. After managing to calm herself down, she told him where the forge was and also where students take forgery classes. With Alice pointing him in the direction, he headed for the forge first. He had never been to a forge before, other than seeing the few blacksmith shops at Red City. He didn't see the actual forge, the place where all the weapons and tools were created. On getting to the forge, he was surprised to see a huge building in front of him. He had always thought that a forge would be a small place. He went in to see what it looked like inside. On getting inside, he was greeted by the sight of two people working. It was just like a normal blacksmith's workshop, with a furnace at the extreme end of the building. A boat-like wooden object with water in it. It was probably what was used in cooling the items after they were shaped. There was a normal-sized table inside. Gray didn't know what it was used for. There was also a hammer which looked too shiny. 
he guessed it was rarely used here, since it was lying close to a man who was working on what looked like a shield. He saw coal staked up close to the furnace, and a young man who looked around his age could be seen putting some in the fire underneath the furnace. He would also occasionally use his fire element to increase the temperature. The use of the coal is so that the furnace could maintain a steady temperature, since the fire elementalist couldn't release fire constantly for long. The man who was working on the shield was an earth elementalist. He created a huge earthen hammer that he used in shaping the shield. Gray stood at the door of the forge for over 10 minutes, just watching how forgery works. The man working on the shield saw him when he entered, but didn't bother about him. A lot of students come to the forge, but after seeing the strenuous work, they always run away. He didn't see the need to chase this one, since he would leave on his own. This is the end of this video. Thank you guys for listening. Hope you enjoyed and wish you wonderful rest of the day. The silent rupt is out.